Welcome to the Jimmy's pre-show. We've been monitoring your comments, and uh, the guy who is saying that Jordy's is packing. <laughs> How the fuck do you know, mate? Packing. Yeah, we need to know more about that. Packing. Can you hear yourself? I can hear you, Jordan. You can hear me? Yeah. No you know bueno. Can you hear yourself, Jordan? No, I can't hear. Oh, oh, there we go. Hey. Now I can hear myself too loudly. Oh, f- well, make your mind up. That should I'm be. I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed. Uh, yeah, look, I don't know are if you, he's packing. You, who's playing? Are you, can you? Oh shit! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm stressed too. <laughs> All right, are welcome to the Friendly Jimmy's pre-show. Um, let's, uh, Jordan. Do you? How was uh, for the first question? How was mm. Melbourne? It's not the shame. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> COVID screwed that place up. Oh, uh, yeah, I've watched ABC in depth. Dictator Dan. Yeah, I was guy? starting to think maybe Labor's not the way to go. Sorry, Dictator Dave. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he understands Labor politics. He got there in the end. <laughs> hey, I'm LP. proud of him. Uh, what do you mean? But you, you have to admit one thing, and I always notice this. Aside from all the cultural quirks that Melbourne has, in terms of uh, comedy, it's a very giving city. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They know that they're at a show. And you know why? No offence to everybody that is from Melbourne, but you guys don't have a soul. What does that mean? <laughs> I just swear, you walk around in uh, Melbourne such and a, everything... Such an huh? such a, such a, uh, incrim- incriminating statement. Everyone there. No, no, no. They have souls. Oh. I'm sure you're all getting into heaven, mm-hmm. except for the ones in North Melbourne. You know, Carlton, Carlton and Fitzroy. Yeah, but Carlton's all right. It's where they brew the beer. Is it? Well, aren't they cunts? They're basically. <laughs> it's their new town, Surrey Hills. It. Not cult. Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. It, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, when you walk around there now, you just realise what a glum, depressing city Melbourne is, and they have to do something to lively it up. When you come into Sydney, the air smells better. There's here's, here's an insane thing that Melbourne hasn't figured out. Trees are pretty good. Let me write this down. Yeah, you, you take notes, all right, and then you send it to Dave because you're on good terms with him. <laughs> they've, got, they've got some trees. They have some trees. That's they true, Ali. But they also have – remember when we saw radioactive waste – what? Just on the streets of Melbourne. That's right. If you don't believe me, go on my Instagram and check out one of the older posts. I am not kidding. There was legit. It looked like it it's, was Hulk's piss. Hulk's piss is a good way of putting it. I was going to say uh, that stuff that that guy in RoboCop dived into and came out as a mutant. It was exactly that color and consistency. <laughs> um, um, but like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. You come to Sydney Everyone here doesn't have a soul, but the city has a soul. You go to Melbourne, everyone has a soul, but the city is soulless. Gotcha. They they need art. They really do. With, with Sydney, it just does nothing but detract. It's like, oh, we've got weird little French fry doohickey fucking things that flail around in the sun. Yeah, that's that's... Worse than a harbour. Why did we spend fucking $50 million on that? But when you're in Melbourne, that is a huge improvement. Uh, I thought you liked Blade Runner World. Isn't it Blade Runner? It is Blade Runner, but there's pretty much... I like six blocks of the CBD, and this is something else that they have that we don't. Hey, how about you not model your CBD off 70s New York? I'm sick of there being sketchy areas when you're walking around the richest part of Melbourne. Well, that's what What's we'll, that going we'll on have there? to disagree. I like that. It made me, me too. feel like that's I am mad in the Big home. Apple. It's like oh. you're in the Warriors. <laughs> hey, you feel like, like you're in the Warriors. That's great. Yeah, with like a hat like that, of course I will like it. Because that's what gangsters look A lot look of people like. are commenting that I'm a dweeb. This is my new look. This is my new style. Yeah. I'm cool from he, now onward. He, <laughs> yes, unlike the special podcast that they did up late, Ali has... Once again, changed his mind. He is now officially back on that fuckboy train. <laughs> <laughs> One week later, turn around. Turn around, yeah. No, I am not. It's just my cool boy look. <laughs> it's because this you're cap not a is boy, really good. Cool cool Dude, this cap belongs to my... This cap is like a, a, apparently almost 25 years old. Vintage. Vintage. Show him the front. Shout out Brand Cardigan, probably. 
Can you zoom in on that? Yes, they can. <laughs> I thought you got that in General Pants. <laughs> no, I you didn't. can't buy that shit at General I didn't, Pants. I didn't. This is like this is this was owned by my girlfriend's dad, and I've nicked it. Your girlfriend's <laughs> dad. <laughs> he gave it to her. And I nicked it off of hers, and I said, I'll buy you two hats, but how, I'm keeping this one. How much is Why that? Why did you get that? Because you saw people at a music festival wearing it. No, it has character. It's an old cap. It's got VB. I like it. It's better than New York Yankees. <laughs> it's got us there. <laughs> but it's not as good as whatever that says. Reels Company. <laughs> <laughs> much more iconic than VB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that means. What is this Victorian shit as well? Weren't we just dumping on it a second ago? <laughs> now we're giving it props? <laughs> what do you mean? This is <laughs> changing quicker than Ali's opinions on fuckboys. I uh, like that 70s... Uh, I, the CBD of Melbourne's mad. It's on a grid. Mm-hmm. You can get around and it doesn't cost you 20 bucks to go two kilometres. That's a nice change. It doesn't take you two hours. Trams are free. There's trams... Uh, the worst public transport, not the old I swear ones. Monorails are more useful. Trams, than trams are the worst public. What transport. are you talking about? Well, in Sydney, it's horrible. Because That's because ours are fucking. We based it on our train, so it's like we want them as big as possible, as slow as possible, as inefficient as possible, and is as expensive as possible. Like that's why ours are shit. The ones in Melbourne are like basically hollowed out fucking. I don't know, like units that people used to live in. It's like. Right here, everybody on board from a time where everyone was skinny enough to be able to run from Melbourne to Sydney. Come on, Cherry, we have to get to Yarra in 24 seconds. They're heaps of fish. That's true. They're mad. But don't you think every single one of them is just, next stop, Luna Park. <laughs> Again, <laughs> where's there. the disadvantage? I love uh, St Kilda. Do they have a Luna Park? Uh, yes, yeah, Luna Park. Kilda, right? They have yeah. a horrifying Luna Park. It is fucking weird. But ours is scary enough, but yeah. theirs... Man, I went to Luna Why Park recently. Why is that recently. indicating fun? Don't you, you pay out fun, St Kilda? Fun. You can pay out Melbourne. You know, I'm not having you slag in St Kilda. Oh, I, we probably should apologise. Some guy commented saying, Carlton and Fitzroy aren't new town. Melbourne is new town. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I, I do withdraw that statement. He's so right. What was that? It is. It's just one big me- me- new town. Like, you... <laughs> it is. D- ...fly out from Melbourne and you just think, fuck... They have just hired like a hundred Greeks from Mykonos to design this city. <laughs> they just like, hey, you know it's way better than bushes and greenery. It's Kementus. <laughs> Obsessed with Kementus. Kement. <laughs> Kement. Uh, I mean, you're right. When you go to like Fitzroy or uh, Smith Street, it's just like, this is just Newtown. And not, not even, yeah, I, those parts of, of any city where it's just like, there's big posters of New York, and you'll never guess cafes. Yeah, it's like no, nah. nah. uh, but that's all. That, that's everything. But the city. food is far superior. That's the same shit. What are you no, talking about? No, I think Sydney food is actually not. What? Sydney is not good for food. Oh, oh, yeah, you, compared you, to other, yeah, you're killing compared me. to Melbourne, I think that's the case. That's a false. That's mad as well because you did have a restaurant in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> you were calling it. Holy shit! Hey, yeah, that's so is. great. <laughs> Uh, what's better? better? What's better in Melbourne? Like food wise. Food every every food is better in Melbourne. The hours are better. We both got food poisoning from Chinatown in Melbourne. Well, but was it tasting good? Well, did it taste good before you got food poisoning? I mean, it was mad. Yeah, that's And point. that's the big difference between here and there because I've also gotten food poisoning in Sydney, but it was Guzman and Gomez. I'll take the Chinese. <laughs> exactly. Wayne and Gosman. Alright, so uh, <laughs> Jordan, there's a question for you. Say Nizzle says, ask Jordan about his appearance on Luke and Lewis. Oh, how was that? Yep, just it was awesome. That. I love those guys. They remind me of us if we grew up in Melbourne. They're really cool guys. It's just <laughs> they've got a much more optimistic outlook on life than we do. Right. I think that is the real defying difference between Sydney and Melbourne. Everybody in Melbourne is a little more laid back and positive. Right. Everyone in Sydney is a bit more like, "Hey, I'm walking here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. they on Triple M? Yes, they were for a little bit, and just, then they uh, keeping up with the news. I. Sweet. <laughs> Keeping up with the news. Why? 2017 weekend triple M shows. <laughs> Four years is still less than the amount of time you have to hold on to your tax papers for those playing at home. No, but Luke and Lewis were, they're, they're good guys. Yeah. They are very good guys. <clears throat> and I really like listening because they're the only people in our generation, apart from me, that give a shit about radio. 
Oh, that's cool. That's so great. I could talk yeah. to them about all the industry inside Goss all day. I respect that. I'm gonna. I'm so gonna what listen. What was the latest Goss? Did they have anything to say? Oh yeah, Kyle Husey. Husey's the big industry Goss at the moment. You know, it's <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's like, all the rage. But like, <laughs> have you heard of this promising young upstart? So stupid. Like, that is some like the view shit right there. It's like, did you know Husey is popular? Will he remain popular? I can't answer that. He's too popular. <laughs> He's on everything now. Fuck me. I'm what else so do they say? Dominant. What else do they say? Like, well, what, what saying, about it? They were saying that, and it's really interesting. Radio has eaten itself. Hamish and Andy was a complete fluke, but mm. it's not so much the medium that's dying as is the word Byzantined. The industry has been mm. byzantine. I think that's the word where cool. it's just become way too top heavy. It's a huge industry that has hundreds of radio stations uh, amalgamated into Southern Cross or stereo. They're all getting syndicated. So there's no talent that's getting trained up mm. in the regional areas like there was in the 80s and 90s. That's a damn shame. So it's cannibalistic. It just It's eating itself up. It's eating itself because there's all they've got is the big names of yesteryear. They have your Dave Hughes's and your Kyle Sandilands. And that's why Kyle Sandilands, I didn't know this, but the reason that he just keeps coming in every year and being like, 12 million this year, 15 million. Jesus. He's on $12 million a year now. And the serious? reason is, is because they have not trained up any other talent. So he knows, I'm all you got. <laughs> Uh. Advantage Sandalands. <laughs> do you think it's also got to do with just the the fact that radio audience is shrinking? So whoever is left yeah, are there from a, from like the true. olden days, and of course they'd be into Kyle, and they wouldn't be into like some of the new kids because probably both. The new kids are um, they're doing podcasts or they're listening to podcasts. No one's really listening to radio as much. Yeah, there's definitely like that technological shift, but the real death of radio that we are witnessing is not completely because of technology. It is also the fact that there is just a bunch of suits at the top being like, oh, okay, we tried someone. Oh, their ratings died instantly. Okay, just hire Husey again for $10 million and put him in the Sydney market. Even though he is a Melbourne institution that knows the ins and outs of AFL, I'm sure AFL will work really well in Sydney. They've got the swans, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we'll put him up against Kyle Sanderland. <laughs> but I, I can understand why they're doing it. It just shows that they're really strapped for cash. The same thing's happening to movies. You know how like most of the new movie productions that are going into theaters are basically superhero movies. Kyle mm. Sandland is the superhero <laughs> movie version of radio, right? It's it's the only thing that investors are willing to back because they see more of a potential of their money coming back. But if you say, well, there's these three uh, podcast guys that are doing it's like, yeah, maybe they'll do well, but I don't know if they wouldn't. And the audience seems to be shrinking. I can't risk it. Just get Husey again for yeah. the fifth time. Well, you know what, Ali? It is what I learned in the Tony Robbins Business Seminar, which is that there is too many leaders and managers at the top, not enough artists. There's too many layers of bureaucracy between the guys making the radio and the people deciding where to put the people making the radio. There's like six layers of bureaucracy. For instance, when Luke and Lewis were there, it took them <coughs> six months to figure out, oh, they've got a social media presence. What? Sounds like Move FM. <laughs> Move FM never figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no layers of bureaucracy. <laughs> there was a shell company, a ghost, us, and an owner in Dubai. That was our radio station. Uh, 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 don't forget the posters of the young divas. I'm pretty sure that they were the second in command. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like the arbiters of the fucking companies. It's like, it, 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 fucking, what's, what's, what's the opera singer's name? Anthony Kalia owns this building technically. Yeah. Marilini saying, what about FBI? What about FBI? Well, I'll say one thing about FBI is that they are... Not flush about, with cash. They, are, they can be good sometimes. I like FBI, but they're not flush with cash. They're not exactly... They're a, not flush with cash. And also, like, I, yeah. I used to find it annoying when uh, radio hosts were just extremely scared. Uh, but now with FBI, I've come to terms with it. Because they're like fucking 18-year-old, 19-year-old kids working for free. Mm. And all they want in life is a cool job. And this is the closest thing that they've gotten to. As long as the tunes are all right, I don't mind it anymore. Look, I that's agree. all very true. But I will counter that with if I was 18 or 19 and on air, I still wouldn't sound that scared. 
But then again, that's why I wouldn't have the job because they are scared of keeping their job. <laughs> Coney, Coney, Coney for PM 2021. Good said, on you, mate. Said radio is dead and I've got a uh, Gladys for PM. A lot of 4 PM names. Radio is just there as talent acquisition for maths. It is kind of dead. <laughs> it's a dying thing. They're just throwing cash at, as Jordan was saying, I think the names that, that they guarantee, they already have. The, they're not willing to invest in young talent. But that's why we're here. I don't think they've got the money to invest in young talent. Yes, they do. No, Dude, they, come they, come it's fifty million dollar business. So that's what? Profit. They've got they've got fifty million dollars, but they've got fifty million dollars for a sure shot project. Huh? But that's the whole thing. Kyle what they're gets saying is mill a year. Yeah, but Kyle is proven a money maker. You know, there's a difference. But Kyle is gonna die. Have you seen how purple <laughs> his face is? And I think he's radio a fat will die with him. <laughs> What's gonna happen? When radio he dies? would die with him. And it will, and it will. But I'm saying that it didn't have to be like that. No. It's just they don't understand that you need to develop the show. Like, for instance, when you listen to Luke and Lewis, right, I always thought that they actually were good. But the fact that they have been doing it now for five years, there is a massive difference between them when they started and them now. And they are at the point where Andy Lee, for instance, listens to them and thinks they're good guys. And you listen to their show, and it does. It sounds like a commercial radio show, but it's not on commercial radio. Yeah, but so that's the other thing. You are bound to get better with time. Like, yeah. when I look at it, when I listen to our old podcast, we're the only exceptions. I think our first podcast was way better than our last. Oh, no, God. But, like, no. but you can tell that we've so gotten true. better at it. And yeah. you would. You just need to give them time. Same, I remember like when that happened with Conan O'Brien when they kicked him off. You just need to give people some time and eventually they get the groove of it. Every episode is a learning process mm. and they will eventually like Kyle wasn't born. I think back in the day, there was such a big market for radio that you could almost afford to kind of just not make it for one year, two year, three years. But now everyone expects your first episode needs to be like your highest viewing event ever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's also the thing that before when there was multiple companies competing against one another, they didn't have this outreach where they could just be like, you, face of a national drive home show. They had to come up with their own little national drive. They had to come up with their own little drive home shows. Mm -hmm. And so there was just more jobs there, which meant that like you had to fill them with someone. And so you just got the best person that you could to be in that role. Also, they let, they allowed for people to grow and make mistakes which is pivotal for any creative endeavor. Yeah. Because that's how you get better. And that's how you actually think of original content and funny stuff. You're allowed to fail. I mean, it's definitely true. Like you listen to Kyle and Jackie O. It doesn't matter if you like them or not. They are a well-oiled machine. Yeah, that, that is, is a smooth off. show. I, I can't, if I hear it, it's hard to turn off. I'm just yeah. like, he's got a funny voice. It's <laughs> hard. But they also know where to steer the conversation. I think Kyle's really good at it. Whenever someone says something, he knows exactly what part of that mm. sentence to pick on that will make it interesting. Mm. And that only comes with like, how long has he been doing it? Decades of practice, yeah, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. And Lewis and Spies, I've heard them. They're really good too. But I, and I can tell you, like, give them some more time and they will be a force to be reckoned with for radio. Did they get booted off, Triple M? What happened? They kind of left because they were just uh. getting kicked around. And then finally they said, hey, boys, how would you like to be the breakfast team in Newcastle. And they were laughing about it. And I was sitting there we'll thinking, I'd, I'd take that job. <laughs> <We Totally. laughs> Maybe not Newcastle, Wollongong. All right. Yeah, I'm right. aiming a little higher. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but like yeah. it was 70 grand a year. It was again, one of those things of you really should have just invested the time. And it was also very prevalent apparently like, cause I went to the comics lounge in, uh, sit in Melbourne that has been cancelled by the Melbourne Comedy Festival and it's what, amazing. What, the venue's been cancelled? <clears throat> yeah. How do you cancel a venue? Should we talk about that on the actual pod? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, juicy. Talk about I, it on that's the juicy. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. juicy, then talk about it on the actual For uh, the record... Let me, let me go, go to... Yeah, you do it. For the record, though, I still think, no surprise for me, that American Rosso were and are the undisputed kings of Australian radio. Just putting it out there. You know what it was? Carl Sanderlands identified it as well. They just didn't give a shit. That's what, that's the best comedy when you have no, nothing to lose. That is always the best comedy. Yeah. Because it's the funniest because there's nuance and there's, well, there's no nuance. Well, there is kind of like you don't, 
when you overthink comedy and you over, it's like overcooking a fucking leg of lamb. Sorry. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> your manager just straight up, bing, straight away. Yeah, do uh, not talk about the launch. <laughs> don't, take a, don't talk about the venue. Why not? Uh, well, like, well, not now anyway. No, I'm going to argue with you. No, in the live. Comments. Come on, no, no, no. Me. But my point was, um, you know, with, with comedy, I feel like, I mean, I don't, I don't have to tell you this, but I'm just sort of extemporaneously rambling here. But, you know, I think, because why, why, why was everyone funny in high school? There was essentially no audience it was to entertain yourselves it was just pure it was just a pure thing of like i just want this to happen it wasn't like i have to fulfill a quota or make the producers happy or the my boss or i'm gonna try my hardest you know if you sort of just let it if if if, if, if there's down periods and slumps then Who there's cares? then there's slumps that kind of makes the funny parts funnier mm. and they understood that you wouldn't you'd listen to american rosso and you might not laugh for like 20 minutes and you'd be like, Meh. and then something would happen. You just be like, bah, bah. you have to pull over. Mm. And that was because there was 20 minutes of like, yeah, look, fuck you, the listener. Well, it's no good. No, whatever, man. Not interested, man. You, you got an attitude on you. It's every time, gold, gold, absolute gold. <laughs> that's why I like Chappelle show. That's why I like anything that's good. But that really is your style of comedy. I guess it is. I guess I but you like that style where they're yeah. sitting there being like, yo man, I'm gonna teach you something about life. But I'm gonna be smoking a vape a lot. <laughs> Who doesn't like that? That's all I ask. Because I bet you Ali likes the more nineties comedy def jam stuff of just I, being I like, like that. Man, black people love crack, man. Dude, that was like my jam. <laughs> it was like objectively like it was the Rock. funniest. I like Chris. Are you talking about Chris Rock? I yeah, that him. kind of that I love that too. Era. I'm just saying, look, for Aussie, uh, for, for that period of Aussie radio, can't be beat. I'll Aaron tell you Carosa. what, though. It's definitely true with the stand-up show. It's the first stand-up show where I've just thought, no, you actually do need a couple of lulls. You need a yeah, of course you do. in the hour because it's too much. Yin and yang. Of course you need that. Of course. It's really strange how much you're into that. Well, it's the same uh, with Miss Love loves being not entertained. <laughs> yeah, That's but the it's point the, he likes. But it's the peaks and valleys. It's the same. It's <laughs> a, just like our audience. Thanks, guys. Thanks for showing that's up. That's not today. true. I. Lo- that's not. Even, that's not true. I like to. I like to experience the lows so the tantalizing highs are all the more sweet. That's what. It that's is. lovely, Miss Love. <laughs> just telling you. Just um, putting it out there. That's really nice. It's the same thing with music. What's what's mad? Some dude shredding for 20 minutes or like a solo that just gets like, he's one solo on the whole album. It's like, <gasps> so special. So good. Tasteful. True. But I'll tell you who likes the shredding for 20 minutes. Who? Losers. <laughs> and yeah. losers have a lot of money because they don't have girlfriends. Now you're onto the, now you're onto something out of my, my, my jurisdiction. But you're speaking sense there too, my friend. You are. Depends who you're going for. Yeah, it depends who you're going for. Except for Kyle Sanderlands, who really figured out the glitch in the Matrix, which is when Ali was referring to the interesting part of the question, here's the solution. How big's your cock? <laughs> yeah. It always works. I mean, <laughs> you hate it, true, you can true. love it, but you're still you're interested in it. That's true. Um, one more thing that someone, so someone said, uh, get a deep on the pod. I do have an update <laughs> on a deep. I actually was telling Jordan just that. Uh, Adib, <laughs> how crazy is this? So one of one of these guys that we knew who studied in Australia had just gone back to Pakistan, and Adib's investment idea on him was like, "How about we start a university?" <laughs> 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 and, and this guy's response was, "Oh, I don't know anything about teaching." He's like, "I don't think we require that." <laughs> what the hell? He said, "Some because someone told Adib that." Uh, you know, these education businesses make a lot of money. Oh, That's all he needed to know. Fuck's sake. A university. Yeah, easy, you, easy institution. The dumbest stuff. man on earth <laughs> founding a university. <laughs> Fuck. He's, he's like, I don't need... And this guy, <laughs> who he's asking to open a university, he was saying, I, don't, I didn't even get a good score at uni. <laughs> the only way I'd go and to that And he was like, uni. and the problem is, you are not listening. We need to open university. If you can't do it, someone else will. I don't think that man can write. Yeah, no, he can't. He's illiterate. The only An way- illiterate man. This is a messed up world. <laughs> 
The only way I'm going to that uni is if a uh, baby is teaching one of the classes. Yeah, okay, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? This is how you write stand-up comedy. You walk around your room for six years thinking about something and then getting anxious and doing heroin. Oh. No, dude, this is how you write stand-up comedy. Befriend an old man and prepare to get close to him like you've never been close to another man before. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't be saying this line. Cancel, cancel. A University of Adib. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and how good would it be if the university's name is misspelled? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then they, in order to cover up, they just take it, they make a uni of Adib. <laughs> Let's not make it too complicated. <laughs> yes. And like, also, um, what was the other point about Adib? I don't even know who this guy is. I, mean, I suppose, look, he is sort of right about it. I mean, he, he, as we were just talking about Southern Cross Austereo, it is run by people who have no idea about radio whatsoever. Panther. As someone once told me, they're like, you know, the richest people in the world have, don't have one business. They have 50 businesses. Do you think they know each and everything about those 50 businesses? Yeah. No. So he is right, but he needs a better team than the guy who just came back from Australia because he couldn't get citizenship there. I think there's like better people that can help you. Maybe find someone that is a university <laughs> lecturer. Like that might start help. off with that. Like that would be that would be really helpful. Joseph <laughs> Barale is looking out for us to just say Panthera, Panthera. I don't even know anymore. We'll just say that every seventh Why word. Why are we getting cancelled now? <laughs> I can't keep up. I can't that go. just being like, oh, what you're saying that Hughesy shouldn't be in the Sydney market? Okay, boys, you just lean off. You know, <laughs> Hughesy's gold anywhere. <laughs> um, they're asking you You've suffered, suffered enough They're asking you Why aren't you writing a book <laughs> Such weird request What the fuck <laughs> write a I don't fucking know how to book. write either <laughs> What kind of question is that Yeah they're like why, why can't Why isn't Jordan writing a book he he, barely, He'd he make millions He barely has time true, you To would. eat breakfast This man once was so This man's so in his own head That once he went into a room, then came out completely naked, <laughs> just cock and all, and me and I are just talking to us like as if he hasn't got his cock out in front of me and Ali, at which point we were like, what the fuck? And, he, and then he just sort of like just scrambled like, oh, yeah, I'm naked, and just scrambled away. Like, can he uh, write a book? Don't undersell it. There was a more womanly scream involved. Oh, was there? I can't remember. I swear that was what happened. It was like one of those bad dreams where I was saying that, yeah, you know what else we should do for the pod as well, right? Yeah. And hang on, I've got a call from Christo. Christo, watch up. And then you're just like, uh, Jordan. I'm just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> What you need is a, uh, a ghost writer to follow you around and just write a book for you. You don't have time to write a book. That would be just as good. Yeah, I need the guy that wrote Trump's biography. Yes, yes, yes. That's who I who need. Is, need that. Who is that guy? I swear I he know. came on record and he said, uh, but he's, uh, Trump's written, written several biographies. <laughs> Has, Has he? he? Well, no. Not really. No, he's written he hasn't one, even read them. He's, but written a, he's ghost, he hasn't written shit, but like even like The Art of the Game was probably, he probably contributed marginally, I would imagine. Trump, do you know like Trump's conned a lot of uh, his people? Like uh, they, he asked for um, a donation during campaign. He said, this will be one of donation. Send me your credit card details. <laughs> what they didn't know, he kept charging them. <laughs> what, a <funny, laughs> what a kid. What a funny fuck. The original the, like, you know, fucking dodgy <laughs> online company. Yeah, and the fucked up thing is usually when people give one-off donations, it's usually higher than what they oh. would give if it was a subscription. <laughs> is this true? So, he, so this people were like, news? $500, what they didn't know was $500 every month. <laughs> is, this, is this true? And then he, he got sued and Joe Trump was like, this is such a farce. If they, they don't even look at the stats, only 2% of the people sued me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I would really <laughs> love to know, because I don't even know, but it would be really cool to see what was like fake news and true in the Trump in his world. It would be amazing to see just if there was just some sort of like, just the, just the, the facts on, on page, you know? It'd be so funny. You get me? No. No. I'd like to know what was true and not true in his career. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, like a fact. Behind the scandal. Yes. Well, just watch the ABC fact check and they will tell it all. <laughs> you know where that what, really should be watch? placed on VH1 if that still exists? It does. 
Well, is it just that? No, is it, it kind of just like Bono's life? Was it really that mad? The answer is yes. Yeah, of course Bono's <laughs> life is mad. He's Bono. He wears sunglasses everywhere he goes. I know, and he's eighty now. <laughs> I mean, you're pushing it with the cap at your <laughs> age, and he's he's wearing the I'm out of love yeah. sunglasses <laughs> now. Just being like, hey, I invented that. Damn. But I'm not. This is nighttime cap. It's the other way around. Hmm? In daytime, you're supposed to wear it so that the sun gets blocked. At nighttime, you're supposed to turn around and be a cool boy. Right. It's really weird to me that you are. Uh, you have that cap and you still haven't talked to us about how sick online poker is. <laughs> <laughs> online poker, yeah, I'm basically turtle from Entourage. <laughs> oh, dude, look at you. I love that you went to And you handle the same stuff the yeah, turtle yeah. does. You handle all the merch. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Uh, and, and we got drama right here. Yo, you want some muscle or you want some sandwiches? Yeah. Is that drama? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch I haven't watched I'm Entourage. I'm gonna put an I love cock on the back of your car and laugh about it for a week. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> like, be, it's really scary looking at you guys now. It's a spitting image. I'd be down for that. I yeah, <laughs> I, I need to watch some of this show so I get what the hell you're talking about. Like I, I need to. And you would love that show. It looks really boring though. Like it's, <laughs> what is boring about a guy that isn't you landing sick Hollywood movie deals and plowing heaps of chicks. But I just assume it's like... <laughs> yeah, I, their Vince was better. <laughs> 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 he, he was plowing really, really hot women. You just have a girlfriend. Who? Loser. Oh, Jordan. This guy. <laughs> Look, I, it, it, it is it, true. Every, every clip I've seen of it is just like, yo, four middle-aged men... Getting flown in the private jet from Vegas to Boston. Ninety percent of the show is them walking to a jet. It's like I don't know if I was put on this earth to waste time. Much of that. <laughs> I think you were, I and think I think you know. That no, you I don't think I was. I was here. To, I was put on this earth to waste the time on a lot of shows, but I just don't know if that's one of them. Yeah, you need to get the quota down from ninety to eighty-five percent jet walking. And then you're on board. Uh, that's still too high. Too high. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. You I should, really should. don't understand your taste in entertainment. What do you mean? In one part, you're saying, oh, I, I love it because it's just basically one long lull. What? A show that is one <laughs> long lull. <laughs> that's I'll take The Sopranos. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. That is a weird dichotomy. And I bet you watched Entourage and you thought it was The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Tony, I never saw him, but he, you know, I, he must have been a metaphor for Mark Wahlberg, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a metaphor for Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> he exists. Why, why do you need a metaphor? <laughs> what do you mean? That is such a. I don't know, I'm thinking about it. What a superfluous show Entourage was. Exactly. But do you think, wouldn't it get cancelled if it came out today? No, oh, for sure. Why? Why? Is it like. Do the very entire show was. Oh, she's boys. an eight. No, she's a nine. Oh, right, she's right, right. a six, dude. But we'll all still tap her, right? No, Turtle Wood. That was the entire show. <laughs> mm, mm. And it, Let's talk about tits again. Well, then again, that is this podcast, and we haven't been cancelled, so. Haven't we? <laughs> but I don't know. If we're Panthera. Panthera. Uh, Panthera. All right. Well, look, we'll. No one's coming up with good questions. So we'll take a break and we'll come up with the. We'll come back with the main point. And for all those that were saying Jordan's camera is uh, shit this time, we'll fix it. We'll turn it around. And also, before we go, can I just say, I love you guys. I've just noticed this. Anyone that comes up to me and listens to the podcast, they're always a legend. It's never it's cool, a fucking actually. psycho. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm going to shout that out too from like the seven of you that I've met. But like, you know, all in all... Newtown uh, pubs. No, no, no. Well, yeah, that and like Newcastle. Shout out. Mm. Everyone's and very nice. Town of the North. Yeah, everyone's very like... The other thing that we need to thank them for, for the last pod when Jordan was away... Mm. Uh, oh, for listening. They Not only did they listen, it was filled with like really positive comments. Yeah, there Except was Except like, for one guy. <laughs> <laughs> always one. Who's like, you who suck. has his own particular issues. He was like, why would I even bother watching when Jordan isn't here? I'd rather watch The Gatekeeper. Well, that's but, a fair point. Fair enough. <laughs> but, but then watch other it. Than why that, comment? Other than that, everyone... Was very very complimentary. So they're nice people. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you yeah. guys realize how uh, 
sick you dudes are in comparison to the average oh, wait, you friend. Talking- you know, like are you talking oh, about like right. an audience or us? <laughs> you guys, right, 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 right. Yeah, you guys suck. No, 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 no. You guys are you. legends as well. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying that because I do meet a lot of people on the street, it's got to be about 95 percent that I think, uh huh. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I was uh, just going over there and right. I just walk over there and stand <laughs> at them in the back. <laughs> but yeah, I think that yeah, in in uh, in the in the grand spectrum of like guys, you guys, you're all right. Hey, right back at right you, back Mr. Bush, you. man. <laughs> I'm not taking the photo. Relax. All right, enough of jerking Wait, each I other wasn't off. Shooting we'll you. we'll like watch. Uh, we'll come back from the break, and then you can jerk each other off. No, no, no. Misov's got Vixen on his computer. We'll just watch that. <laughs> Vixen. Ow. Hello. And welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. This is the 13th of April. Where I don't know why I'm you. saying that. Where's the year going, honestly? Where is the year going? We're almost there. And Where? Well, we're almost at the end. April. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. We're about, what, more than one-fourth in. I don't yeah. want to hear that. All right, let me just quickly check the camera angles. Uh... There you go. Is that anger? Is that angle better for Jordan? It better be because see. you're not getting anything else. That's great. What was the problem before? I don't know, but they said that it was bad. Anyways, so I'll do it once again. I'll edit the first bit out. Welcome to the Friendly Jordy's podcast. Thank you for joining us today, Jordan. You just came back from Melbourne and you've had very unappealing opinions about no, oh, not unappealing. Bad opinions of Melbourne. <laughs> if you want to find them out, become a patron and check out the pre-show. Which we put on Patreon. If you're already a patron, then uh, we thank you. Grazie. Yeah, good on you guys. Thank you for uh, supporting Miss Love's pedal habits. And let's be honest, Ali's weed habits. <laughs> Wait, my <laughs> weed habits and it's Miss Love's pedal habits. habits now, thank you very you know much. I'm off for? the pedals. I'm off the pedals. How about you change it? How about you pay for the rent for the studio? It does do that as well. <laughs> A little and bit up of a so detail. I can get a mortgage and pay. <laughs> come Jesus on, I, I don't want to pay rent anymore. It's dead money. <laughs> ah, and you know what else is amazing? That is Miss Love's financial advice to me. It yeah, like, you went to my advice. I think you should buy a house. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> I've Good been advice. around Ali, and I know that a buy owning a house is better than a renting. Yes, and uh, having roof over your head is way better than not having one. <laughs> and mackerel is high in omega three. There you go. No, but honestly, he needs an electric. No, look, it helps us run <laughs> the show. I yeah, uh, I don't. Well, Why are the headphones? Is there a delay on now? It sounds so weird. Um. I yeah, look, should be fine. Uh, we we love you because you love to help. And yeah, I'm on to amps now. I, I'm, I'm done with You're wasting done with frivolous amounts of money on pedals. I'm up to now spending lo- lots, uh, much higher sums of money on amps. <laughs> and for the last week, he's been looking at two amps that are exactly the same, but one has... I think it's blue and the other one is green. <laughs> That's a difficult choice. They're not exactly the same. One's a ceramic speaker and one's Al Nico. Very different. But the price range is what's really different. Yes. There's a very large array of price ranges in the speaker world, if that's what you're asking. I was asking that. Yes, but also, are. I did hear that when you were in Newcastle, you went into one of those music shops and they were like, okay, so if you want my advice, you should upgrade to the other one. Does it sound better? Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> basically, I left that guitar show. I mean, surprise, surprise. I have, I bought. I ended up getting a really good deal on an amp, and now I'm sort of just Frankensteining my own gear together. Like I'm like, what if I put that speaker in that cab, and then put another head on top of that, and all I gotta do is get a small Cambodian man on a bicycle for half the gig. I can power this thing. You know, <laughs> that's basically <laughs> where I'm at. That's just, I think that just happens when you're 30s. You're just like, no, no, no. I know that cab's uh, been eaten by termites, but no one's explored the tone of termites yet. You know? that, that's where I'm at. It's kind of fucked. That's where I'm at. But yeah, I, I went to Muso's Corner in uh, Newcastle. Shout out because they were actually very lovely, really nice people. And I'm not suggesting they were trying to rip me off at all because they were giving good advice. But, you know, 
I agree with what they said, but it is pretty funny. They were just like, you want my advice? I think you should get the one that's four grand. <laughs> <laughs> and my response was like, I'm really glad you shared that because I agree, mate. <laughs> yes. In the midst of fretting about the fact that he hasn't paid taxes for four years. Let's not talk about that on the pod. <laughs> Fucking hell, Jesus. Th- talk about throwing your mates under the bus. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. Fuck. Okay, yeah. All right. How many Let's bombshells w- How many bombshells can you drop in one night? So I think a lot of people so would be in the predicament as you, so it's fine. Yeah. Look, but okay, look, let's, uh, let, we'll yeah. move on to our first segment for the day. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually really fun because, uh, you know, when two people that you hate are fighting each other, it's a really entertaining uh, position to be in. Mm. That's what's happening with Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm Turnbull was dumped from uh, New South Wales government's Clean Energy Board. And oh. th- the way it happened is, he, you know how Murdoch hates Malcolm now, right? <laughs> yeah. Open season. So Malcolm was inducted into this Clean Board Energy Review. And he said that uh, one of the first things that he talked about was how uh, this new coal mine in Central Coast should not be going through. And... Uh, Murdoch basically slammed hard. He activated every media outlet. The thing that really got him was um, he apparently has property and uh, and horses or some shit around the, that area. And so they make a big Bastard. deal about like how <laughs> he's basically just protecting his interests. The funniest response was... Um, from uh, Bruz, <laughs> dude, Bruz has like no spine whatsoever. What do you Bruz, do? Br- when, it, when it was floated, I, I guess like the New South Wales Liberal Party floated, like we should get Malcolm into that. And Bruz, like, the, the greatest idea, this is the greatest idea of all times. I love it, I love it. We should do it. And then Murdoch would have basically called him up and said, What the fuck are you doing? And he was like, That was the dumbest idea <laughs> I've ever had. So sorry, so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so he flipped in two days. <laughs> Look, you gotta love that man. Are you? You? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason that he's basically the only thing up on the wall. That and the Australian flag. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, bow barely. To the, bow to in the, the periphery. Yes. Is he in? You're right. No, it's oh, it's just in there. Let's go, chickens. Uh, I'll, I'll be six feet under in the cold, dead ground before that goes. All right. For it's all those, all, yeah. for just as a side note, the reason why our background is changing is because we're redoing the background. We are from scratch, and it will be slightly more professional this time. <laughs> hopefully, one so become so a patron because we yeah. kind of need more money hopefully, for redecorating. Hopefully, sometime this year. <laughs> and what do you think about this idea? <clears throat> Space, the final frontier, <sighs> and best wallpaper. Actually, yeah, I would like to know what you all think because won't an all black background be really reflective and look really weird and shit on camera? Come on, techies. All right, get so at should me. we just tell them what we're thinking of doing? Yeah, so let's, let's. This let's, is let's what we're thinking of doing: making the background, uh, putting a wallpaper that's basically black, and then instead of having any of this, putting in like a, which is going to cost us a fair bit of money. I looked up, but what are those? Um, the illuminated. Things. Yeah, the illuminated. Uh, oh, but neon I, signs. Yeah, yeah. A that's neon the sign one. that just says, "The Friendly Jimmy's Podcast." That's it. That's the background. But what about those? But I like the one of the just being like our solar system in the background, and but maybe I, making the sun fatty from the footy show's face. <laughs> <laughs> We're falling into the same <laughs> trap again. <laughs> Why? We're not doing AF NRL tips. <laughs> well, there's no time like the present. Oh, let's yeah, start. Yeah. I'd love to know your tips. I reckon uh, the t- Tigers are doing pretty <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, this, yeah. Are they? No. And it's not even a joke. I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, no, they're, bad. They're doing terribly, terribly. Yeah. See, the last time that we did sports chat on this podcast, it was a roaring success with the audience. It was. They loved it, would have been. <laughs> Especially at RL. But I like those portraits that our friend, our, our good mate legend sent in too. Yeah, there's a fair bit of stuff. But then the problem with that is we eventually get bored of it. So I think it needs to be simple. A look into the space somewhere. <laughs> background that Jordan is talking about. But people are saying that the neon sign is a bit... Uh, we, wow. al- we also low-key want to change the banner from being like, we're little pixelated men. No, 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 we're not in our 30s. To uh, like... Yeah. yeah, we are in our 30s. Yeah, to like the portraits. I really like those portraits, man. But look, we'll get there. <coughs> I really like the picture of us where Ali was saying, um... Yeah. And then there was a picture of me looking like Slappy the Dummy going, eh. Yeah, and yeah. And then there was Ali being like, huh? Yeah, I mean... That's Ali, but I get what your point is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? You just don't worry. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
you're doing the thing. All where right, you're rock doing, on. You're doing the thing where, where you I talk you guys but don't up. think. Yeah, <laughs> um, I agree. That was great. But the guy who made that, wherever you are, you legend, didn't we have some weird thing of just being like, uh, we're doing this? And it was like, big fan. Don't use the app. Like, what? <laughs> don't was use ma- the app. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Or maybe it was a different design. I don't hey, know, anyways, but we're well, going to well, work we'll it out. We'll figure out the, the, the background stuff later. All right, look, uh, the, the thing that I wanted to ask about this uh, Malcolm Turnbull being dumped from the Clean Energy Board is, do you think, uh, look, I hate Malcolm as much as the other guy does. And Barrel Arrow. No, everyone. Right. Most people don't like him. I like but I do like, like the though. idea of it's seeding insane. some of this climate change debate to, I guess, the, the moderate... Uh, wing of the Liberal Party because we need more allies and it's the environment everyone deserves and they're not really allies are they but okay even if they're not do you think it would play a constructive role in perhaps convincing some of the people on the Liberal side of politics to switch over and perhaps change some of their opinions well he was the Prime Minister (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if now he's on an advisory board. <laughs> I could be wrong. But he was a brave Maybe brave. there's more sway. In, what was it called again? What? The yeah. Council Clean Climate. Clean Energy Board. Clean Energy Board. <laughs> right up there with the Egg Council. <laughs> Just no hope for the future. <laughs> what the fuck is the Egg Council? Uh, you know what I think? This uh. would be mad. <laughs> don't you reckon? Replace That's Malcolm right. Turbo with Tony Abbott on that. But council. he's not going to do <laughs> it. Fuck. He's not going to do it, though. No, well, I mean, money's money. Why else are they doing it? I don't. Well, I don't know if Malcolm wants money. I think Malcolm, Malcolm wants cares. relevance. Malcolm cares about the environment now. And, and also, what do you think about this argument? Uh, that what Malcolm, yes, he was the prime minister, and he should have done a lot more, but. When he was the prime minister, he was just a very weak prime minister who was constantly afraid of one nation moving away there. Because, you know, he was, uh, well, his, his majority was razor thin. Scared of his own party, mostly. He was scared of his own party. Mm-hmm. He also understood <laughs> good that. good reason. They did out him for exactly that. And, and most of them hated him too, right? Like you could safely say that most people in the Liberal Party hated Malcolm Turnbull. Yeah. Who did he run against? Well, as you said, most people hate Malcolm <laughs> Turbul, so, yeah. so they are our representatives. So maybe not the best guy for the Clean Energy Board either. But also, isn't the Clean Energy Board just like a face for the Liberal, the New South Wales Liberal Party to pretend that they give a shit? That's Probably. the Liberal Party in general. See, this is the whole divide between the Sunday Telegraph and the Sun Herald. The real division there is just one is controlled by the wets, the other one is controlled by the dries. But the dries at least acknowledge we're not doing shit about climate change and we don't care. I like them being in charge more. They're more honest. The wets are constantly saying, it's the biggest issue facing humanity. Are you going to do anything about it? Um, there's a school that like got opened up there. We had nothing to do with it. It's a local council thing. <laughs> That's their contribution so i really don't think that it's better that there are more wets in politics if anything we really should just completely obliterate the wets faction of the liberal party so everyone knows what the liberal party really stands for like and the it's senate just, the dries are more honest and the senate yeah get rid of the senate as well god you know just, what just we really get don't rid have of Australia. views that aren't that much less extreme than Gavin McKinnon. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to abolish the government. We just want to abolish half of it. Yeah, we want to abolish. Uh, but the idea of... No, it, yeah, less bureaucracy, no checks and balances. Just Oh, but do you want to make that point clear? We The the last episode that Jordan was on when we were talking about ABC being defunded, mm. we got a lot of bureaucrats on the comments saying like, hey, I'm not that bad of a person. Uh, <laughs> I tried my best. No, you know that. Uh, they're saying that they try their best and uh, not all public services just like smooching off of the public dollars. That's true, but also allow me to just reiterate this 2GB point. There's a lot of leeches, isn't there? But I will say this, I'm very, I'm, I'm a huge fan of public service. In fact, we're currently researching now a big, big, big video about how much the Liberals have decimated the public service. But my thing is the older i get the more i'm just like damn chomsky had it right when he was just saying like dude if you are a government institution 
or if you're any institution of power at all, justify your existence. And if you don't, get the fuck off the tape. But I do think that a lot of bureaucrats actually do a lot of... They obviously, they keep the country running. They're a vital, vital service. But I'm saying that the ABC aren't. But what I'm <laughs> saying is that what the public should understand about them is they don't really even see themselves as journalists. They might use that word a lot, but really the way that they look at their job is as if they are pretty much just Gretel Colleen saying, the next train goes to Cronulla. <laughs> that, that's how they... <laughs> uh, uh, Gretel. You know, they do see themselves as bureaucrats and I understand that bureaucrats work within the system and that system is supposed to keep the country working, yes. But I really think that the ABC has no actual justification for existing. I really think that it would just be better off if it just fucking exploded. Look, all right, I'll say this. I'll say the thing is, yeah, 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 obviously a public broadcaster is better than commercial outlets, but really it is just a tool for the government, and the government 70% of the time is the Liberal Party. So how often is it actually reporting on anything of significance? And when the Labor Party is in, yeah, it might be reporting on things of significance then, but it's probably then just reporting on the Labor Party, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Look, I, I don't think I don't think anyone was actually uh, surprisingly. I don't think anyone was arguing against defunding the ABC, bin, uh, which is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> but they were just arguing that they were nice people. They were arguing that not all, because we were comparing them to uh, some of the bureau, bureaucratic public uh, services that they're basically the same, and they're saying the public services people were saying actually we do uh, some of the we do a lot of the work. I really don't doubt that. I don't doubt it either, and I think if you are working in Australian bureaucracy and you are doing, you're trying your best, that is truly, as the name suggests, public service. And you should be yeah. proud of that. No, it's admirable. Yeah. What about the argument that the ABC are just the military wing of the Labor Party? Military wing? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the bottom that of that. That is one of the dumbest things I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> because no, uh, do you mean media wing or military wing? <laughs> I think it means military. <laughs> yeah, yeah, throwing pencils. Uh, 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 the pen is mightier mm, than the sword. Mm. There's not Keep many pens at the ABC because they're predominantly a radio and television service. <laughs> but there are some. And Keeganator made a good point. Labor wishes that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say to that? Huh? I've got a whole stand up show on it that you've seen six times. <laughs> Still has <laughs> Edward Bernays has a moustache. <laughs> Damn, Miss Love spitting facts. A lot has changed in the week that I've been out. Okay, so look, uh, we'll move on from that. Let, we, we've come to the conclusion from that last segment that everyone hates Malcolm Turnbull and no one gives a shit about him losing or getting a job. I really just wish that we could change the face of the ABC to Malcolm Turnbull, which is who they like. That they is the ABC. That is the, the ABC. ABC. Uh, all right, so the se uh, second segment, we, there's another news story. So clearly the, the Australian government, the Liberal Party, is in extreme crisis mode because they're doing some really dumb shit now. Uh, because they're like extremely stressed about how they've bungled up vaccines, they're trying to hide some of their other shit, which is difficult to hide. So one of the things that they did was, you know how because of uh, the Liberal Party moving from uh, the NBN program from like first saying, nah, copper's the way to go, to now going back to like optic fiber, apparently already uh, the NBN plan, uh, the NBN project is um, has has a loss of close to six, between six to seven billion. But that, they, they try to hide it. So in their reports, they like buried it under um, information. They claim that it's somewhat still profitable so, and assume that no one will catch up on it, yeah. forgetting that there is an entire opposition party whose job is to check everything that they do. And they said, yeah, there's a $7.4 billion loss that they tried to hide. So the problem isn't, everyone knew that it would be in loss because it's such in, in such shambles. But the point is that they're trying to now con the public by hiding that sort of shit. But that's what they always do. So what's the big controversy? Well, the controversy is that they're losing on every front. I uh, guess. Right. There's no controversy. I'm just, I'm just celebrating the burn. Me too. It was a real turnaround moment in the last few... Nah, just the last month. 
Yeah. Don't you think that the press has just permanently soured on the Liberals? Yeah. And I've also heard, I've talked about this in a previous video, but I hear from little birdies that Murdoch is willing to talk. With He's actually Labour or with the Labour Party. I and that it was a real message in 2019 that I'm not letting Bill Shorten fly purely because he said some mean things about him. <laughs> <laughs> and so he punished them with installing the Liberals yet again. And fair enough. He needs to show him who's boss. But I think he has well and truly established Fuck. that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, don't jump the gun. What? There's still time to flex that power. Well, it is something else that Murdoch does because he is a genius at playing them off of each other. Of, yep, you've got a chance, you've got a chance. Oh, you missed out. Better luck in 2026. Do you think ah. he's afraid? Because there is a lot of media attention on him being a very bad person. Is now, you've got like... Well, you've got Kevin Rudd that is on like this crusade against Murdoch. Then you've got uh, Malcolm Turnbull, who's now also against Murdoch. And a lot of the media uh, attention is on Murdoch being like a force for bad. I think it's, it's probably the best way out for him is to side with the Labour Party. Because if he can do that, then... Uh, the attention would die down because he'll eventually switch back. This is not a permanent alliance by any means. I don't think Murdoch is now to say, actually, no, nah, fuck that. Climate change is real. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a progressive now. He's doing it because I think he's now afraid that eventually, if both parties, let's say, what are who were the Malcolm Turnbull? Were they the Wets or the Dries? The Malcolm Turnbull Wets. faction. So if the Wets come into power. And if he's super mean to labor, they get into power. There's like a 75% probability that whatever government would be in power, if he was able to get, uh, if he was able to keep Dries off of power, would be uh, hostile towards him. Mm. So I think he, the only, I think it's, it's, he's making a smart move. He probably needs to side with labor, give it three years, and then sort of move back into his old Tony Abbott ter territory. Well, that is. And it was actually a really insightful comment that somebody put on the video. I imagine the guy was solving a Rubik's Cube with one hand while typing it. He got it so right. He, <laughs> maybe. We, we, There's you a chance. There, Miss There's a chance. I, you know, I'm going to rule it out. Sounding very sus. It's almost as if you wrote that comment <laughs> and you were solving a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Now, I need to emphasise this yet again. LNP is the Labor Party. Oh, fuck, fuck, Liberal Super. <laughs> um, uh, unsend, delete. Ah, censor tube. Add it again. <laughs> <laughs> you should change the name to censor tube. <laughs> have you been watching Gary Awesome again, have you? No, I wish. I, I need to get up my quota. I love that guy. Yeah, you still I, need to breathe a bit more about his Foo Fighters covers. Needs to oh, dude. let that gesture. I, I'm such an idiot. Why have I left him for so long? I'm his biggest fan. Biggest fan. I don't know. Yeah, you're up there. We're, we're up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Some of the only people that still listen to it. But uh, yeah, he was saying that he thinks, and he's right. If you look at it historically, that's exactly what happened. Every now and then, the press allow the Labor Party in because the oligarchy realise, nah, we've uh, sucked this goose of all of its fat. And so they need to fatten the goose up. And by goose, I mean economy. Mm. Uh, so that they can just harvest it for the next couple of decades. And I think that with all of our economic figures, they've realised... Now it's time to do that. And they've got somebody in there that's friendly to the Murdoch press, which is Albo. So it is looking very good for the Labor Party, I think. And the other point that he was saying that... I remember that this was like kind of the strategy back in Malcolm Turnbull's day. It still could be to this day. He really wants Dutton as Prime Minister. And so I think... <laughs> Why does he always choose the worst guy and be like, that's my guy? <laughs> He, he, well, see, a, the disagreements begin. Are they? <laughs> well, you think Dutton's a great <laughs> man? I just would so much prefer him than a wet. That is who the Liberal Party should be. I was going to say, a man that looks like a dead cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is. Yeah, Maniac Cop. You know that movie? That show Maniac Cop in the 80s? It's basically him. Yeah. yeah. Like, doesn't he look... In fact, we should just make this a meme. Can you guys compare Robocop's face from the <laughs> 80s? <laughs> 
can someone beat a duck? Can you make memes on Twitch and show? No, you can't. Can you tell the difference? No, they're not going to be able to. Just make that and put it online. We'll find it. Because we can't see it now. Surprisingly, we actually will because they've all cottoned on to the fact that Miss Love has Instagram and actually answers it. Yeah. I probably shouldn't have given that away. To be honest, I don't. I I try to do it as much as I can. I don't. (sighs) No, 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 dude. That's. I I do it. That's not actually true. I, I I tap. I have this thing where I tap. Like cause I, I do my band's uh, socials. So like I'll just log into that and I'm like, no harm in checking my personal one. And I'm just like, yeah. So like there's there's like little. Basically, you got to a few days every five months to catch me on Instagram. That's true. But every now and then, a hot I, meth I, head does hit on you. <laughs> so I think you should be checking it more frequently. Okay. But don't be offended if I because like I I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, Jordan, you might not know this, know this either. Social media is a bit of a time waster and does have a negative effect on your mental health sometimes, Ali. So that's why I delete it. So don't be personally offended if I don't answer. I just have to do other things in my, because I'm 31. It does have an impact on your mental health. It does not have an impact on (laughs) Ali. My Instagram is straight up broken. Like it always shows that I have 25 notifications and and you go, I don't know. Like it makes it really difficult. But anyways, I've got a a question about the, um, the Murdoch now siding, siding, uh, siding with Labour. Do you think, and this is just a question, it's not something that's good, bad, cancelable. Do you think that... <laughs> Can I just say something, part- please? <laughs> I have to say this. A lots of salami. Miss love pink cross cam forever. <laughs> I don't get it. Don't get it. Shout out. He's sh- Sorry, but I'm getting a shout out of my pink cross cam. My camera has a cross on it oh, perpetually. Oh, that's right. My, my broken camera is getting shout outs. Because you are. It's very Jesus-y. It is very Jesus-y. Anyway, sorry to interrupt that's you. Sick. Sorry that glitch you. is as popular as Forest Hall. <laughs> and oh, I like, well, and with good reason. And with good reason. <laughs> with good reason. Yeah. No, but okay. Yeah. So, so Fuck my, you, man. Go on. My <laughs> question was. No, I'm not saying your band's bad. I'm oh. just saying. That cross is pretty special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a special cross. Is it a phone still working with that? (laughs) (laughs) And and it's, I don't understand how that cross is. Usually it's, if your camera is broken, it smudges parts of it, but it's just a, it's like it became a Christian. (laughs) It's been years and everyone's just like, yeah, pink broken cam for life. Like it's like a thing. Keep that shit going. Yeah, you better. Keep it going, keep it. Anyway. Okay, so my question, Jordan, was that, do you think, here's a conspiracy, mm-hmm. do you think that part of the reason why media, Murdoch, and everyone seems to be moving away from Scott Morrison is that they are, they kind of uh, want some of their Chinese dollar? You know what? Now I've got to talk about another inside source. But I was talking to somebody else. Ooh, is it okay to reveal this? Yeah. And talk about this? Okay, okay. Their conspiracy theory, I suppose, was that the Indian government got the Liberals over the line in 2019. Indian government? Uh, hey, yeah. hang on a minute. Hold on. I this knew is, it was this them. Is, this is not good. Even before what? that, I knew it was the Indians. Wait, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> but like how? This is interesting. Well, they were just saying that if you look at it, there is a lot of foreign investment from India and it goes under the radar because of the foreign investment from the US and China. And also it's just convenient to make China the boogeyman. And yeah, I I can see that happening. And the thing is, obviously, uh, China really hates the Liberal Party, as they should, because they're just such an insane foreign policy. This is their foreign policy. Uh, please see the White House's foreign policy. Should just be that <laughs> sentence. Yeah. Uh, the Ministry of Defense now has, just has a link to me for American <laughs> State Department. Yeah, they weren't argue, they, they weren't screwing around when they said they were going to cut red tape. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They just outsourced our foreign department. I think that you're right, though, man. Look, I don't even think it's that Machiavellian. I just think that. In fact, now that we're on it, I was thinking about this with Christo while we were, we were away. Can we just clarify something about China? Because there's so many conspiracy theories now <sighs> Here we go. wading uh, around the net. Panthera, 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 Panthera. I love Panthera. rocking out to Panthera. If you don't clip this, I will. 
release that you are funded by Panthera. Put on us. Yeah, I'll put it on us. I'll put it on us. <laughs> hey, guys. Sorry, continue. No one cares doing. about us. <laughs> <laughs> Two strangers were in the periphery of a friendly Geordie's comment. We don't know who the fuck they are, but uh, maybe he's security. No, but we assume no. that one of them is either from Newtown or Avalon because of his striped shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, now you're a gone. sailor <laughs> and a possible sailor compadre. <sighs> All right, the camera isn't on you, so now say whatever you want. Not whatever you it's want. It's really <laughs> not this straightforward. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just like a fucking, like, one of those... Bulldogs you have to contain, <laughs> otherwise they fucking ah. Oh, he's running. He's running onto the road. You know those French bulldogs. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, he's oh, he's dead. No, he's dead. We gotta put him down. But sorry, go on, go on, go on. Continue. I think that China. It's it's really not like it's so it's so like look, China is not the boogeyman that is displayed in the press. But I also don't want all the Chinese foreign investment coming into this country buying land and water. You can buy as many businesses as you like, as long as those businesses aren't 1.3% of Australia's land mass. It's, it's extreme. really it's not extreme. extreme. No, that's, and, and that's something, I was watching your video and I, as someone who is considered to be or like is perceived to be a China dove, I would say neither do I. Yeah. I don't want extreme, like, Chinese buying up most of our public. Like, we need to... But here's my other... This is my personal opinion, that n we shouldn't let China buy, but we shouldn't let anyone, anyone. else buy it, too. Yeah, it's... it's it but I stand by Bhutan. If Bhutan owned, wanted to buy it, I'd be cool with well, that. But they country, won't, so it's so. fine. But even Bhutan... Like, it should... My point is, it should be Australian-owned. <laughs> Of course. No one else should be, and including China. So, yeah, that, that vote, is, I completely vote agree. It's really not Dick an extreme Smith view, party. but uh, it's just, look, what you get when you have the Liberals in power is you have a government that, on the surface, is really tough on China, is constantly playing into that they're going to invade any second. Is that Xi Jinping? Oh, no, wait, that's Gladys Liu. All right, but you're on watch, Gladys. Like, <laughs> well, she was part of the, yeah, she has connections, apparently, doesn't she? But no one ever talks about it. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks about Sam Desiari's connections. And Sam Desiari's connections was... He ate in a Chinese restaurant once. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, you, you get that. You just get this constant yellow scare from the Liberals mm. in terms of their image. But the reality is that they're just auctioning it off left, right and centre, which is the thing that you should be scared about when it comes to China. But let's go further than that. You should be scared of any country... Buying your land and water. Yeah. It's just that the Chinese are buying a lot now because they just have so much capital that they're just like, uh, let's buy the Murray. Bargain. Mm. Yeah. But also the US does it as well. And Canada. But nobody's ever scared of those because you're just yeah. not programmed to yeah. be scared of them buying. It, 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 no country completely should right. buy our food resources. We should be no. able to decide who we... Uh, I'm not saying that we starve people. Like, we would be more than willing to give it if you need it. But I'm just saying we still get to make that decision, mm. you know. You can't We get to decide us. if you yeah. starve. <laughs> yeah, like, and you won't, but we get to decide if you do or if you don't. No, but you're right in terms of ownership. It's like, it's very troubling, you know. Very, very, very troubling. troubling. All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. It came out, it came out. He's finally on board. Uh, well, China uh, is an issue. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a controversial point to be like, let's not fucking sell off every asset we have to anyone. Mambo Shirt writes, Friendly Geordies, you need a dicky knee puppet so Jordan can say shit without getting kicked. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, I just need a dicky <laughs> knee puppet. <laughs> Who said that? As if you don't need that. Who should, what was the name? That, shout that guy. That's hilarious. That was Mambo Shirt. What <laughs> Mambo a fucking shirt. iconic a name. Great name. That's probably the best name I've seen there too. That's hilarious. Dicky Knee. Can hey, someone just get us the Dicky Knee puppet? We'll give it a good that home. That would be great. Yeah. Just anything controversial because no, no, news.com can't be like, can't be like, Mr. Jimmy's, Mr. Jimmy's. Like you can't be like a Dicky Knee puppet made a controversial statement. Yeah. <laughs> That's genius. It is genius. Holy but shit. But now that I think about it, that basically is Christo. So we should just have the gatekeeper there. That is pretty much just having a dicky. That's knee. true. Except you can't turn that puppet off. 
Well, you couldn't turn Dickie off, you know. Yep, you're not wrong. <laughs> when he was on, he was on. <laughs> Brain. <laughs> the gong show. <laughs> All right, look, uh, as riveting as this conversation is, we've got to oh, press on. Oh, wait a on. sec. Miss Love Sucks Sucks. I have acknowledged you. Sick name. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Damn, right, that's important. Uh, a lighter topic. Did you guys hear about Kevin Rhodes' mistaken identity? Julian Assange. Julian Assange. No. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Uber driver. The guy that used to be uh, Tim the Tool Man's friend on Home the Improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Who U- was it? Uber driver. He was mistaken for an Uber driver. He was He was just, I think he dropped off his nephew or some oh. shit and he was driving back home and some drunk people sat in his car and was like, uh, they thought it was his Uber, and that's sad. And K Road is a champion. He actually dropped them off to their destination. What, what a king! What a nice I man heard about that. What a nice guy. Too much of a nice that's, man. That's a ro- that exact that's thing happened to me, out. and that's I did cl- not drop them off. <laughs> <laughs> I was, but it was so weird, dude. Like this bit. Sorry, this chick. <laughs> she was being very rude oh, as well. Like, I, um. I know, I know. But like, I was driving right, and I was uh, right at front in front of UNSW's uh, gate. And I was parked because the car in front of me was parked. And she brought, she came in and she sat in my car with her suitcase and was like, all right, the airport. And I was like, uh, huh, the airport? She's like, yeah, take me to the airport. I was like, oh, oh sorry, I think you've, you're getting it wrong. I'm not your ride. And she was like, are you just going to like, uh, are you going to tell me to get off? I was like, yes, I don't tell you to get off. And she's like, but I booked you. I was like, I am not your Uber. She's like, you're just saying that now. I was like. Bitch, I'm not your Uber. Get the fuck out of my car. <laughs> and so I was very, very rude to her. Come eventually. on, you were a driver. I guess I was cosmically her driver. <sighs> but I was not. And she was giving me <laughs> attitude. I was like, I've gotten... The- you just sat in my car. I'm going home. That's fucking hilarious. I would have just driven. I would have been like, yeah, no worries, man. I would have... I would, just for the story. But they would have arrested Such an Ali story. Oh, true. They might have just been like, what Why? the hell? Well, I don't know. They're like, probably, oh, they're, kidnapping. They would have been. Uh, he would have been racially profiled. Yeah, Kevin Rudd gets away with it. Dude. Yeah. If I had took someone to like, they were like, and we have another problem with brown perverts taking all our girls. <laughs> yeah, no, you would probably be. Yeah, and that's yeah, not but they fair. mistook Kevin Rudd for being Chinese. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing. This you happening. have to admit that would be a hilarious story. Just been like. All right, let's go. And then just it, it would be, be so it wouldn't be hilarious when I'd be in jail. Ah, uh, you'd be fine. That's true, sure. but it's also it's just a very Ali story the way that panned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. such a way that your you life. Did the, right the only thing. way it could be more Ali is if after you were like, get the fuck out. Straight after that, you crashed into the UNSW. <laughs> 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 and then all the students run out. Like, we're free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the car crashes, you're <laughs> sitting there and going like, hmm, that was a bit aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should talk about that on the pod. Was that the right way to approach that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, tell me. Should that I have crashed into a bunch of pedestrians? <laughs> right move or wrong move? I like someone's comment. Um, I don't, sorry, I, I missed your name, but... Um, Oh, here it is. BHL underscore guitar. Meanwhile, an Uber driver lost a fare. <laughs> that is true. That's quite Kevin funny. Kevin Rudd has like, kicked on some poor like man's he's, stomach. Like he's obviously joking, but that's a really funny way to turn around him. Like, meanwhile, it's like, that's funny. Why do we need Dickie Need? This audience is just the <laughs> Hey Hey Saturday support you guys are staff. You real- just come up with cartoons of us. <laughs> yes. You sit there and pay us out. Mercilessly? Yeah. I don't know why you watch. Is it just to do that? <laughs> yeah, just you guys sit are there really and be like, funny. Jordan looks like a Tic Tac. <laughs> no, no, he's almost like Lord Farquaad. <laughs> anyway, his eyes are too slitty. <laughs> you guys, you guys are actually on point tonight. You're very funny. You're very funny. Yeah, they, they are. Like, that's where I, all I don't think that I've ever seen a comment that is unfunny. Yeah, that's where all the Squealing radio talent pig is. Pig is saying Kevin Rudd stealing working class jobs <laughs> once again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Fuck it up. Yeah. That's gold. In the GFC, he lost 22,500 and <laughs> one jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ubergate. <laughs> Do you think that he got any coverage in the Murdoch press for that? Yeah. I think it, no. this this new story, oh, maybe. Kevin Rudd drives a drunk passenger, is like, it's going to get you clicks. So I think even Murdoch media would not have been able to resist it. But I think at the bottom, he was like, and... 
That's how a fake Uber started. Yeah, right. They would have a, like a tilt of like why it's bad, but they would report it. I'm surprised he did it. You, you know what it would have been? It would have been him being like, yeah, right, I'll get you a lift. And then all these the Sydney Morning Herald and ABC would be like, that's quirky and it's not political, so we can say it. Exactly. And, right it. and then yeah. Murdoch Press would just be like, look at how desperate he is for headlines. <laughs> <laughs> just the whole the whole. But do you reckon, I've got a question. I love what? Kevin Rudd. He, he's, he's a force for good. But do you think when those people said, you know how we almost think that's, when there's something interesting happening to us. We go like, Oh, this could be a good pod story. Mm. And so you keep going at it. Do you think when they sat down, Kevin Rudd was like, oh, I'll drive him home. This could be a good pod story. Everything he does is tactical. (laughs) Yeah. Look, he he is. And that's not a bad thing. No, he's a genius. Yeah. And he would have just been thinking 30 moves ahead. Yeah. He would have been while driving there just being like, and then the Murdoch press is going to say this. Yeah, he knew. Which I'm going to write this boss tweet. Exactly. And then it's just like, and then my name's out there and then I can push my story against Murdoch more. If if Good on him, but yeah, but that's still, I think that's what, that's why he would have done it. And I think he would have, because he is a bit nerdy, you know, so he would have gotten like a laugh out of it anyway. It's like, oh, you didn't even know. I'm, I'm the prime minister. If he crashed... (laughs) <laughs> and killed that person. What's the legality of that? Oh, he'd be in trouble. Right. Wouldn't it be amazing if he did a dash as well? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then put him on helicopter cam? Yeah, helicopter cam? Chasing him? Uh, it's not me, it's Julian Assange. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like, it's Julian Assange, double up the helicopter numbers, we've got him. Jesus. It would be instantly like in GTA to go straight to five stars. <laughs> 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 and then instantly God. he's in a tank <laughs> in the CBD of Sydney. Boom. Yes. Back off. Um, Check that Christina Keneally's office. But that's actually... <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually good to know for myself in, in, the, in, the, in, in the inevitable situation where that will probably happen to me. And I'll be like, all right. Because knowing my luck, I'd get like T-boned by some truck and I'd be like, oh. She's dead. Yeah, my life's taking a turn, you know. What are you saying? I'm saying I don't want to go to jail <laughs> for killing someone. That right, No okay. one does. I don't think anyone says, I, I'd like to go to jail for killing someone. I'm sure they Twitch don't. Twitch poll. Do you want to go to <laughs> jail? <laughs> yeah, let's get it going. Who is the contrarian out there? Prison is... Uh, Fat Dyke character. on Crack would want to. I bet Fat Dyke on Crack would want to go yeah. to jail. Yeah, let us know your thoughts, Fat Dyke on Crack. Um... Jesus, I would love to see a K, K Rudd, uh, like, what do they call it? Mod in GTA. Because the, the graphics yeah. are so good now. Imagine him just being like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Even doing basic things like beating up some mafia Don in Little Italy, that'd be sick, wouldn't <laughs> it? Seeing him just be like, take that. I'm not one of these. Oh, you got a gun, do you? So do I. Power. This is how we do it in <laughs> Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Kevin Rudd impression is just funny. Without the jokes, just the impression gets me. He's got um, a great voice, doesn't he? Miss, have mm-hmm. you heard of this? This is this is true, by the way. I don't know if the audience knows this. And props to Stig for hunting this. But Steak. Um, do you know the Marvel comic Captain America? Have yeah. you heard of such a thing? Uh, of course. Their villain who's known as the Red Skull, is apparently based on Jordan Peterson. <laughs> and what? Jordan Peterson what? is... Ba- yeah, and, and he, he's like... And the, the Red Skull is a neo-Nazi. <laughs> and uh. he has an army of uh, young boys disenfranchised. Uh, all I got to say and, is... And he's got propaganda, which is basically <laughs> copy-paste from his 12 rules. Uh, what? Book. Yeah, straight up. Oh, this is all I got to say to that. Hollywood is... Very brave for exposing the truth. <laughs> How ridiculous is this? Mm. And you know what else as well? It's just such a miss when it comes to marketing. Just like with Gillette, maybe you shouldn't shame your entire customer base. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell them about the Gillette thing. It's crazy. What, what would you like to know? Oh, just with the Gillette thing? Just the, we're in Woolies. Oh, Yeah. Because their profits the year before last went down $7 billion because after they were just like, hey, you know how you're a rapist and you beat up kids? We think that you can do better. And I was just like, well, I think I could do better as well. Bick. And they just chucked it all out. <laughs> yeah, if there's one product that is indisposable in terms of like quality, like a shit razor to an amazing razor, there's like four degrees difference there. Mm. 
And it is that fourth layer of razor. Yeah. But, but uh, anyway, we went to Woolies and they've just rebranded being like, old time Gillette ain't she ain't what she used to be. We use horse hairs on the thing to put uh, foam on your face now. It's like, will that work? Probably not, dude. Yeah, I don't think it will. Well, actually it will because the only people that would have stayed with them are hipsters being like, yeah, I'm pretty ashamed of being a man because I had an overbearing mother. Yeah, all right. I do like Ned Kelly age. All right, let's get that. Thanks for looking out for me again, Gillette. I can't. Every time he does his like hipster voice, it gets me every time. I can't. Ha- I just can't handle Cameron it. Cameron Rudd gets me every time because I can imagine him. <laughs> no, <but> dude, <laughs> come on, that's so, so good. It's like, yeah, thanks. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. And I was also so sorry. Well. This, yeah, this dude, it's a lot choice of new males. Praising your impressions, and I saw your um, video where you do Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson again, dude. I don't know if I said it then. Genius. So you good. saw that again? I saw that. Wait, like, wait, wait. Yeah, I saw it like three times in a row yesterday. Wait, what? <laughs> what's this? What's this? This is when he's like, you know, he's got like little salad bowl on his head, and he has a key, has to, and he's doing Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. Oh, Do you know what yeah, I did appreciate was... about that video? I don't know if I said it then. Yeah, the impressions are pretty good. That's spot on. But what you're saying in those impressions <laughs> is so spot on. That's exactly what these guys would be saying. Oh. Sorry, I just rehashed a three-year-old clip, but <laughs> it's good. Speaking of rehashing old clips, I watched us do Sizzler again, and I was like, you know what? We're funny. We're <laughs> funny guys. There was a lot of flies there, man. What's with the, the soft serve machine? Who has that anymore? I'm Why a fan. Why doesn't anyone like our food vlogs? I'm Why doesn't fan. anyone tune in to us eating? Can we do a poll? Because we don't actually pay it. Most <sighs> flu- food vloggers poll. are actually saying like, hmm. So good! It's the perfect crayfish with uh, this uh, mayo sauce or whatever it may be. Where for us everything's a joke. Mm. No one wants to watch joke foods all the time. <laughs> True, <laughs> but fair can enough. we poll the eel video? Because I was like, I was like ready to bet, you know, all my money. Being like eel video, you know, three million <laughs> conservatively, and then it comes out <laughs> and it's like, what is it on? Fifty thousand, maybe more. Mm. Man, the hell's wrong with you people, huh? You don't know comedy, huh? You don't understand comedy when it's right in front of your face? Yeah, yeah what the hell? How is that not the peak of Miss Love's career? It's Making a dish of eel that is so gelatinated that you can use it as a hat, <laughs> and no one's paying that. I mean, <laughs> do you want me to quit? Like, I've given you everything I've got here. <laughs> it's, just, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> Paul, right now. Paul. Nah, people are saying it was gold. I think the the, the, the pod audience loved it. I just, I, I ranted to this about Jordan the other day, and this is nothing against you guys. You guys all get it. But like, um, like, I hate this whole thing of like, you know, I hate the optic side of YouTube and online and, and content creating. Cause it's just sort of like, yeah, it's very soul sucking. Cause it's very sort of like, Yep, mate, no, nah, you did really well. You talked about some, you talked about, uh, you said ScoMo was bad and then you, you proved he was bad, sick. That's going to be 200,000 views, uh, click, post. Like, oh, fuck, did you, did you put a thin pink outline around the text? No? Oh, f- mate, too bad, better luck next time. 30,000 only this time. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is this bullshit? It's stupid, pointless, like I understand it, but it's so depressing. So, ooh, these optics, this font, and this, and this is, if the thumbnail looks like this, 100,000. Thumbnail looks like this, 300,000. Like, are we just sheep? Like, yeah. I, I don't know if that's it, man. I think It is, it is it. Well, our podcast has grown a lot ever since we got the Stig in. Just, and it's pretty much just because just he's putting up pictures of celebrities. It just doesn't do it for me. I like crummy stuff. I know that's just me. The shitter the thumbnail, the more I want to click onto it, you know? That is just you. <laughs> just, is and that your you, gripe here and at the moment? You too. There's don't, lots don't of gripes. Pretend. You too. There's lots you of like gripes. crummy stuff. I love crummy stuff, but I'm not going to click on a crummy thumb. Like I have not beaten that part of my reptilian brain, which is a true feat that Miss Love has completely reorganized the most primal part of his brain. <laughs> <laughs> be attracted that's by a shot of <laughs> chips on the left side of it and just like a white wall. But that's just my aesthetic. I like weird, you know, um, kind of 
I like arty weird shit. I, when something is peculiar and just jarring, that's interesting to me. Content, thumbnail, fucking title. I hate all this title shit. Try the, even the speaker stuff I'm looking up on cabinets. It's like, don't buy this speaker. And then you watch it and it's just like, okay, we're trying out the tr- Greenback 101 <laughs> against the Greenback 105. <laughs> goes for 20 minutes and it's like so as you can see they're both really good I mean the 105 is a little bit more present in the high mids and the 101 better for crunch sounds it's kind of more of a scooped mid sound okay bye why was that the fucking title false advertising but I don't know I, I there's this eternal debate I about I don't know if those clicks are even worth it because they'll come and then they'll never come back again Fair what's the, the fans. point well the Fair point weather. is because you're right 93% of the time, but 7% of the time, it is some Chinese guy in UNSW eating noodles, looking at it and being like, oh, well, they're speaking English. So, okay, I can learn English from watching this. That's what you're looking for. So you're saying 7% of the people stay? Seven? Something like that. That's it. Well, it's That's like a, a very high, low subscription number, rate after it. Well, the, okay. But you know what really helps? And we'll do it right now as a little guess. Subscribe now. Do it. <laughs> Press the subscribe button. I've had it up to here with you not. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, no, no, don't, don't take that off me yet. Like as well. <laughs> you think you can get away with just free content, do you? It's Tony well, Robbins, you can. A Tony Robbins three-week seminar. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. And like. <laughs> and let's not forget. He's actually, no, he, his big point was not subscribe. He was saying, share. Share. That's way more valuable. So hmm. share this podcast with anyone Look, you know. And those points are interesting because it's all after the fact. It's all sort of something that, it's just promotion after. It's got nothing to do with the creative content, the aesthetic of it, the title, the, the, the actual thing you're making. So that's great. But I'm just not having all this crap. Is Wouldn't it be somewhat I'm, I'm, nobler for you just to be like, you know, on old school jimmies like just a photo of your butt or something being like <laughs> just completely unrelated <laughs> and then like you, you release your video the videos are mad but like and, and none of, and also none of this what do people like just what do i like and the weirder the better basically what i'm saying is do uncle jono every video from now on thank you you agree you have to stop me but it's just look the only reason i don't is because i have to pay have salaries team, now but team. otherwise if i was still unemployed no, and on the dole you would be doing i that. would be getting my cousin man who someone so aptly described it once sex. looks like an old man that had baby skin stretched over his face <laughs> and that'd be the team lovely man i respect you i love you i love your work you just playing don't play don't head, play you, head the game so. you are just playing you, you, you have responsibilities now I understand. I, I guess it's just no, but game. I understand where you're coming from as well. Now yeah. that you put it out in that, look, showing your ass on YouTube would get it instantly censored. Right, but it'd be worth it for the laughs. It would. See, that's my opinion. I wonder why I've never been a good uh, small business owner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just too. I'm too. No, into but, but we. Fe- I feel you, man. Like, yeah. and I think there's a lot of there's a big YouTube consumer population out there that get really pissed off by clickbaity shit. Mm. Like, if I see someone constantly doing clickbaity shit, I I tend to never click on it again. Yeah, I hate it. But I think we're in the mind. We're in the minority. We probably maybe. are. But don't you think YouTube is just becoming um, the audio the, the the visual equivalent of wall street actually can we uh, mm-hmm. can uh, bye 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 hold, sell, sell, hold sell. that thought because our next segment is related to that and then you can rehash this okay okay so here's a new cool. person nice. that's become officially a billionaire the newest inducting into the billionaire group kim kardashian Whoa. yeah and the question Didn't is her cousin get there first hmm? yeah she did <laughs> her cousin, her cousin sister <laughs> Oh, half sister. Kylie, I don't know. Kyle, I don't know. Kendall. Ken- the one that is uh, <laughs> cancel worthy. The one that is slightly less hot than the other one. Yeah. Oh. And also you sit there and you're like, are you Kim Kardashian or not? No. Oh, okay. I was just checking. <laughs> I generally don't know. Isn't that but, no, but, but here's the question. Yeah. The question is, are people like Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, or whichever the one was the, the billionaire one, people like Paris Hilton... Are they are they really smart, 
Or has the economy got to, gotten to a point where you don't have to be really smart to be a billionaire? That one. The second one. The second one? Well, according to Oprah, Kim Kardashian is actually very smart. Mm, yeah. And that's coming from a woman who said that Michelle Obama was the real president when Barack Obama was in charge. There you go. She must know. Well, I guess every behind every successful man, there's a woman. So I guess she was saying it in that perspective, from that perspective. I uh, think that's half true, Ali. I think she genuinely thinks that Michelle Obama was the president. I think it shows the decline of Western civilization. When you ask the Chinese what they want to be when they grow up, they're like astro- astronauts, doctors, scientists. And then you ask anyone in America or the West, they say, I want a fake you- ash. A YouTuber. <laughs> so I think it's just a decline in but, society. But if you, if you think, but here, here's, an, and to defend Oprah just a little bit, if you think that any man is not influenced by his wife's opinion, you're a fool. You're a fool, goddammit. She, you can have an entire cabinet, but she will have... Very, very. Um, she'll have a strong sway. On yeah, that's what I'm just she was saying, saying to Oprah's comment from I think six years ago. Now, <laughs> you do realize Obama was the president, right? <laughs> we all do. <laughs> like, do you remember having him on for the 2008 election and saying what about, that you're his candidate? What about Hillary? Surely she had her fingers in a lot of pies during during the Clinton's presidency. But right? even I'd say Bill probably had a sway on Hillary too. If they speak to each other. <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying, like, what is Michelle Obama's achievements? The fact that she said you should eat less sugary foods? Yeah, that's it was what, good, that's though. It, is, it was good. I will pay that. What? A good was, advice? Yeah. While you're having frozen <laughs> coke <laughs> and annoying everyone Self by chewing into the Self-made frozen coke, too. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, this isn't some slushy stuff. No, no, no. This guy knows how to do it on a budget, which ironically probably costs more than a Slurpee. I'm not annoying me. (laughs) Become a patron (laughs) so you can afford actual frozen Coke. Hey, I've got a question. If you are a Greens voter, I'm not going to bite your head off, but can you just identify yourselves in the tweets? Because... I don't think there's any. Yeah, we're just going to find out. If you are, I just want to know some things about you. Right. Oh, for fuck's sake. What? I want what? you to identify uh, yourself. Uh, <laughs> and I want you to put a small tattoo on your neck. Let's not do this live. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Let's no, no, I just want to know something because I've heard a lot about the demographics of Greens voters. And I've just realized, <laughs> holy shit, you're not going to reach them. Sorry, is this a common thing? Is someone just, uh, this is so funny. Apparently, Greens, greens are tree Tories. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. That's such a good really? thing. Yeah, no, you've you never that. heard that before? No, no, sorry, but continue. I just thought it was hilarious. But God, like, that oh. sums them up so well. They should change their name from Greens to tree Tories. Really? Mm-hmm. I was looking at all of the numbers. Apparently, Greens voters are the most predictable voting base, even more predictable than nationals. Every now and then, you will get someone that's like, yeah, I love pigging. In fact, look at all those seven pig heads behind me. Fuck, the guys from Lord of the Flies would be shitting themselves if they came here. Yeah, who do you vote for again? Labor. Sometimes happens. Yeah. You know? Choosing fishes. Is that what you're saying? I, uh... Are you getting think maybe, I think but I don't know what you're saying again. No, his brain is frozen. <laughs> he's like, he's <laughs> <You're> gonna, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He froze, and then it made on. it look like the internet connection froze. Just ignore me. Go on. Uh, yeah, well, apparently they are the most predictable demographic there is. They are almost without very... They are, first off, the richest voting bloc in the country. Nationals are the poorest. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at Rudy in Australia. <laughs> I love that. Everything's odd limits. It's kind of just like, you know anyone that's always been, you say, the, I don't know. Everyone needs to lighten up and take a joke every now and then. Except for, you know, paraplegics. You can't make fun of that for some reason. His version of that is just like, hey, if you're wearing a hat, you're off limits. Oh, dude, by the way, I, you, you love people from the bush. Yes, I do. Yeah. But you know what? So when I was in Tassie, I was I drove a lot. And because of their elections, there were a lot of posters. So many liberal candidates in Tassie wear hats. And that makes them likable. I'm just going to say it. Yeah. Because our, our liberal, you, you look at our posters around all liberal territories. It's always like there's some real estate agent. True. But... 
Tazzy liberals all wear hats. Hence, I'm wearing a hat because... I was... That'd be amazing. I would vote for Scott Morrison if in his election posters he was wearing a hat like that. <laughs> yeah, like you? And then ScoMo would make sense, wouldn't it? What? He's just folding his arms with a hat backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to know what the audience I used to is be saying, in <laughs> the audience, most of them are saying, I used to vote li- Greens, not anymore. That's so same here. I, believe it or not, I used to vote Greens. And why did you switch your vote? And what was your demographic? I want to know that. If you well, are a converted Greens voter. Me, I voted yeah, Greens. Someone's, just, someone's written, I probably should read this, but I'll, I'll put it on me. One sec. Um, greens are the lesbians of politics. They can't quite land on a decent policy and stick to it. <laughs> what? what does that even what, mean? Why do lesbians stick on policies? What I don't the hell does that, that mean? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if that makes mainly, sense. This is, this is what I hear. This is what I've learned. <laughs> yeah. Lesbian, and I could be completely wrong. This is a matter that I'm very uneducated on. I think lesbians go like when they get into a relationship, they go like zero to hundred really quickly. Sounds like, about right. Like they meet the next day, they're like, "Okay, so when are we gonna get married?" And so when you go zero to hundred, it fizzles out quickly as well. Look, I can see that happening. Every time I think about a lesbian relationship, I think that there's going to be a lot of baths and candles around that bath. And every time I think about that, I think. Ugh. Dude, that's your bath. What are you talking about? Because I hate doing that with my girlfriend. I hate romantic <laughs> baths. But if really? there's two women in the relationship, don't okay. you think it'll just be that? Okay, can I... I'll admit, I have the same issue. Bathing, when I'm bathing or when I'm showering, I'm cleaning myself. It's not a romantic activity by any means. I hate it. No. Surprise, surprise. I do not. Oh, yeah, because you are... <laughs> yeah, <a woman. laughs> of course. <laughs> it's like my dream. My dream day. I ha- absolutely hate it. Yeah. All right. Does this make it worse or better? Because you're imagining that there's going to be a lot of relaxing meditation music mm-hmm. in the background. But what if they're playing? It's just a little crush. I, I, I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, as long as it's not blaringly loud, I'll let that fly. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it, you're, it's really high up on your priorities. Yeah. I think I'd drown myself in the bath. If that was not. <laughs> Black mate, I know a couple who piss on each other in the shower. Well, you know, life's short. <laughs> Dude, apparently, Good I don't advice. know if it's our stig or someone else pretending to be the stig. Uh, they're saying you guys are missing out. Long baths with candles are the best. Did not know that about Stig. So maybe you found He's yourself watching. a partner. He's watching. Is the Stig watching? He probably, he always oh, yeah. watches, yeah, but I don't Stig know if it's the love in a lesbian relationship. <laughs> Call me up, Stig. <laughs> I like, I like, uh, I enjoy it. The old luxury car here and there as well. So don't mind traversing the hills of Brisbane in a Ford or possibly a, <laughs> you know, different car <laughs> <laughs> so not a car head <clears throat> and just imagine if you ever tried to take the stig's helmet off he'd punch you in the face yeah uh but um yes now what was i talking didn't about? you want you were talking about yeah. the greens and so you were asking so uh, they've responded by saying that they are not greens voters anymore i haven't i haven't seen a single one that says no nah, i still vote for the greens but why did you change i want to know that because apparently 70% of the Greens voting base is rusted on. There's nothing you can say to them to get them to change their vote. And this is what else. They are very wealthy. They always have some superfluous job like, I'm an arts curator. I organise Vivid. You'd have no idea how hard that job is. <laughs> how much do you pay it again? A million dollars a year. And uh, you pay for it. I'm essentially on a really extravagant Centrelink. <laughs> I make lights. Isn't that amazing? Because like, so, there is just that class of people that are on Centrelink, and I was one of them. Your 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 morals conflate so much. You realize most people who vote Labor love anyone that works at Vivid, right? No, that's yeah, that is not true. Yes, though. it is. No. Actually, that is what you made Labor dr- lose because once that became Labor identity, you are living in a dream world. Labor needs to be and always should be the working class party and the working class does not care about vivid nearly as much as that lady does no but i'll tell you something that i noticed when i was at the uh, comedy clubs basically i've been controlled from all of the arty venues that i never wanted to go to anyway because it was just a complete ripoff and it was pretty much what careful now but anyway sorry like yeah 
Here, drink some of this. It's only I was only <laughs> ever interested in going to like RSL. Skull it. Down. No, uh, do it. Down. Down. Do it. Mouths all the way. Get it. Let it go in. Tap it a bit, you know. <laughs> Are you so right? <laughs> Ali, come on. Does this Chirk. deserve a high five? Sure. Okay, cool. Sure. COVID alert. Chirk. Oh no, he's got he's got the vaccine. Down it goes. Yeah, in more. it goes. All right, you don't have to be so aggressive. Well, I'm trying to help. Here, you finish it. You deserve it. It's great. Yay! No high five, though, but I Damn. thought it was worth one. <laughs> That's yours. Well, why That's are we yours. doing this? We know what vanilla gold tastes like. No, I, I, I'm just helping him out. I just, I just thought he needed the energy to... The quick energy he needed to not get us cancelled. <laughs> God, you're a great guy. Isn't that amazing? Save my career and give me code. <laughs> um... When I was there and I was looking at my audience as opposed to all the wankers that are propped up by the Melbourne Comedy Festival, first off, much bigger. But the other thing is... (laughs) That was the sound I got. True story. (laughs) Uh, And then also just put on the boo sound. That was the sound. I swear to God, that was the sound of all of these like wanky ABC types that I went and saw. Like it was just, (laughs) this was the laugh the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, so true um, But yeah, I was w- looking at all of them And I was mm. looking at the differences in our crowd Dude Night and day This whole time I've always been thinking oh, I think that Greens voters You can convert them and make them realise What the Labour Party actually is And what it stands for And how it's the vehicle of getting, you know, <clears throat> sane policies through. Um, you go and you look at these people that are at these and you just know they're all from Fitzroy and you realise, no, these people are fucked to the core. <laughs> they're, it, it's exactly that. Like, they live in this bubble of opulence. They are extremely wealthy. It's just, when, when you think about the Liberal Surely Party voting gen- base, right? To play devil's advocate, you're generalising. 70%. 30%, okay. I'm not generalizing, right, but okay. there is a direct correlation with if you didn't have kids until your late 30s and then you have one, possibly two, and you send them to a private school, that private school kid is going to be a Greens voter. Uh, they're usually single parents, usually very well off, and then they go to university, and what either happens at university is they continue on down the line of being Greens voters, or if they came from a Liberal voting family... They convince their parents to vote green. But in either scenario, the Labor Party is always the devil to these people. They truly do hate the Labor Party more than they hate the Liberals. And it's because the people, the the circles that they come from, they are rich circles. Mm. And so they usually did vote for the Liberal Party, but then all of a sudden they've realised, like, but I like oxygen as well, so you have to vote for that. But then when it actually comes to, and this is the, th- the great trick that the Greens play, they're always saying, like, you didn't go far enough on penalty rates or anything like that. And they're like, yeah. But they know that if they were ever in power and had to implement those things, their voting base would turn on them on a dime. And that is what happens every time they are in power. Their actual voting base sits there and is just like, hey, you were supposed to just put a couple more bushes up in the park. What's this reforming super? You know, they, that's what happens right. when they're in power. What do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about this theory? Like, if you vote Labor or if you vote Liberal, you're voting for whatever you perceive to be the collective us, right? If you're, let's say, you're voting the Liberal Party, you're like, well, usually these guys are against tax increases. I would rather not get tax increases. People around me don't like tax increases. Or if you're Labor, then you vote based on like, well, these guys are working for the working class. I think if you vote Greens. You vote solely because you want to have a good perception of yourself. That's mm. it. There's nothing else going over there. I think you want to so feel good about your political yourself. party. Yes. I think once upon a time, it's the Apple it political a, party. It yes. was it, it was uh, legitimate, like Bob Brown days, where it was like sort of but dude, primarily that party pri- is dead. Let's. Let's well, admit. <coughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know enough about. I don't know. The, I, I think, don't know enough about. Oh, it absolutely, it. is dead. But I'm that, just. That I, greens is. I guess I'm just saying it's sad that that maybe those days. Gone or whatever. Like, I don't know. 
parties change all the time, you know, like the machinations or machinations. Well, I've talked to a bunch of uh, environmental activists and they are always telling me, <laughs> and they were people that set up the Greens. And they were saying, yeah, the Labor Party was ignoring the environmental matters that we were trying to push on a state level. Federally, they were actually doing a lot. Mm. In fact, most of our laws that we have today are a result of the Hawke-Keating years. But they were saying that, no, actually, now that I think about it, it actually would have been a lot more tactful if we just joined the Labor Party branches and started talking about the environment. Because I, it was just they didn't think I, about it. They were just yeah. representing I do like, people that. that worked at factories and shit. So they weren't thinking about the environment. But instead they thought, we'll start our own party. And yeah, I agree that's that. permanently damaged the vote of the Labor Party. They're constantly saying, no, it doesn't damage it because you put your preferences after. But that's not what everyone does. There is a direct correlation in the decline of primary vote of the Labor Party and the increase of the primary vote of the Greens. That is where they went. Um, right. And I think that they are saying now, when they, when they look at the policies of Labor that are environmental, they're just like, these people, because it attracts a bunch of people that are very intelligent, the Labor Party, because they really understand how policy and all that kind of stuff works and how to realistically push things through and what how legislation works. Pencil pushes. Pencil pushes. And so the policies that they're coming out with, they say a lot of the time is just like, it makes way more sense than what the Greens are doing because the Greens are constantly, just as you say, looking for an image while the Labor Party is saying, okay, you need these things to achieve a stop of extinction or something like that. Okay, we'll implement those things. Whereas the Greens just take it further for no reason based off of nothing. Idealistic. It's a constant wedge tactic that they have. They wait for Labor to put out a policy and then they just go, not far enough! And it's just based off of nothing. And it's not, that's, that's not how they keep that image stoked but it was really interesting because when you go down to the comedy festival and you see the differences and this is the other thing everybody's always shitting on isaac butterfield isaac's dad was asked by bill shorten to run for maitland he is a labor guy through and through his whole family is a labor guy through and through well that's well, the tragic bit right like they used to be labor but a lot of those guys are now moved away no, nah, Newcastle's not East Newey. Labor. Look, Newcastle's Newey basically is a, a giant town. union. It is. And in fact, when I go to Newcastle yeah, every time, it? I just think, mm, maybe I should be voting Liberal. This place is pretty scummy. <laughs> but Miss Love hated Newcastle. He came back saying, I'm angry at that city. Why? I mean, I shouldn't say that. I, nah, I say it. It was just like, I, I didn't hate it. It's a pretty city. It's just like, so, and, and this isn't the Jordan's fans or, or like anything like that. Or, or the, the mates I have there. But there was just so many rough beeps. Like, it was crazy. Every moment, like, walking to the hotel, leaving the hotel, walking to a, I don't know, around the corner, cafe. It was just every single point, just sort of like, hey, back, you have to have that. Like, people yelling shit, throwing shit out the window, yelling out the window. It's just a very, like, visceral, intense people. Or maybe it was just that Shooter that fans. Yeah, probably. I don't oh, know. you don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. just really weird I don't, yeah, going probably, there. I don't know that guy. That and long. everyone's saying, you know, fuck, always oh, actually rough customer, and he is the, the most placid, the most pla like. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just saying he's the only person in Newcastle that I don't think has tried meth. <laughs> That's not true. I, I have a few friends that live there, and <laughs> they're great. They've tried. No, they're, so they're do I. But like, it's just. Yeah. It is a very fucked town. It's There's just, no like. I. It's, it's just an intense. It's just an old school Aussie. They they like drinking their beer, like like tradey steel steel producing uh, port town, and they're rough people, and that's cool. But they also yeah. dress hipstery. What's with that? Well, that's I gotta now. I gotta say something about Tassie as well. Tassie, I, I just came back from Tassie, which was great. It was yeah. the prettiest place ever. But I think I might have experienced my first racist episode. Ooh. True what story. What happened? What happened? I don't, My God. I still don't know if it was racist, as in like, uh, I don't like you because you're brown, or it was like, you're wearing your cap backwards and I don't trust you. Uh, One of the two. You picked up another Uber, didn't you? <laughs> another person. <laughs> and this is, the, this is the thing that I got from Tazzy as well. I love the place. Loved, like, just it's great. the place that you, it's the pretty, like the national parks were insane, man. Like, I, I can't go on and on about how much I liked it. You but go the, into those forests and you think, 
I should die here. I'll make a note. Yeah, of and like you feel like you're in a Miyazaki movie. They are yeah. insane, and so. But I did get like a vibe from Tazzy where like foreigners are not preferred. Well, but still, what? Dude, they also mean people from Victoria. Yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. And, and plus, and, and, still but, but like, he, he, there, here's know? here's what happened. And make maybe I'm wrong. Tell me, I'll tell you exactly what happened, and you tell me if I'm crazy. I walk in. Right, it's a, it's one of those honey stores, you know, where like they sell fresh Tasmanian honey or whatever. I walk in, as soon as I walk in, <coughs> this lady at the counter. So the the store is filled with people. Is this Hobart? She's, yeah, this is uh, outskirts of Launceston. So she she looks at me well, and that she says, "Answers your question already." She she <laughs> well, tell me if this is because I might be wrong. She she looks at me and she says. Hand sanitizer. And I'm like, oh, okay. So she's probably anal about COVID. So I quickly put hand sanitizer on my hands, right? And then I slowly walk up and she's like, just fill up the form. I was like, okay. And I did that. And then I walked, which is normal. Like people, you know, you, and then I walk and everything, all of the items said, do not touch if you do not intend to buy. So I was kind of getting that vibe already, but I was just chilling, whatever, looking at shit. Then this fucking couple walks in, this white couple walks in, nothing. No hand sanitizer, <laughs> no form. They go in and they can, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> and then I, and I, I was like, oh, maybe I'm going crazy. And then I was like, hey, hold on a minute. I'm angry. And then I just like walked out. But were they locals? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they were locals. Look, but were they dressed up in animal fur? No, nah, like it probably. They seem like an. They seem like an older. They were older. There was old white couple, and I don't know if they were locals, but. They didn't. They didn't Did go they like. Look rich? They didn't go like. Yeah, they kind of looked like. But they didn't go like. Hey, how are you doing? Kind of local. It was more like you are also a patron of this store. I am also a patron. But for some reason, I'm the only one that has to do hand sanitizing and <laughs> fill out the form. Just the yeah, right. Just sort of like. And, and but in, in, in Australia's defense, the lady was an American. She had an American accent. Yeah, right. Wait, what's that got to do with anything? No, she's I'm not just, Australian. Just oh, it she's vaccinated. Yeah. No, 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 she's no, no. not Australian. She's not. She wasn't she's American, but she seemed like an Australian that it was uh, that had been living in in Australia for some time. But I she mean, did a, have a lot of people there. saying Law Sistan is like very racist and fact. I don't. Like, that's the vibe I picked over there, man. And and I will also say, right across from that honey store was an art gallery, and I met two women, and they were the nicest people. They invited me over and shit. They knew you sanitized already. Yeah, they knew <laughs> I was sanitized. But that's and and kind of the vibe that I got was not just. I think the other thing that's happened is that a lot of Indians have moved to Tasmania because of these regional visa programs. Um, so if you live in Sydney or Melbourne and you can't get your pathway to permanent residency, there is a way that you can do it through these regional programs. So you can go to like a different city, set up shop over there or whatever. And, and I noticed this because when I went to Tasmania, there were so many fucking Indian restaurants over there. Damn, the new Paramount. So they are come. I think they, there's a lot of Indians or whoever, like brown people coming in, trying to get permanent residency. And they have this attitude of like, I don't want to be here. I'm here because I have to get, I'll fuck off. And I guess there's a tussle with locals. Maybe this is, but the vibe was kind of off mm. for people like me is what I'm saying. But other than that, a yeah, but beautiful, are, amazing. And I still want to, I still want to retire over there. Irrespective. Yeah. I mean, they are like the inbred hicks and... You know, you go to Hobart and you're just like, where's Captain Cook? The convicts are still here. So, like, you know, I'm not that surprised. You know what I mean? Yeah. that's the, That seems to be the vibe where it's just like, welcome all ye who dare enter. You know? What a strange atmosphere Hobart is. Listen to this. Just like- I'm from Hobart and I'm not welcome in Lawsest. <laughs> <laughs> that was Zesta third fifteen. That's that's a funny call. Yeah, but and you and have I, to realize Australia is still Hobart did not get that kind of vibe in Hobart nearly as much. Yeah, Australia is a very uh, uh, law system is fucked. Australia, that's what someone's saying. But yeah, Australia's still got that very like, dude. Even even at the fucking show in Newcastle, it was so awkward. Like. This extremely tall man from Perth, but like, you know, not even Perth, like some minor, like this giant man was just like hanging out. It's like, hey, what's going on here? And like, we're like, ah, oh, you know, a show. And he's like, yeah, sweet. I'm just gonna get a beer and come back. I'm like, you want a beer? I'm like, whatever. And then like two, like, uh, I don't know, they were like Aussie, I don't know, Indian. And they came and they were friendly Geordies fans. And like, hey, like, you know, full Aussie accents. 
And um, they're just like, hey, yeah, like, you know, hey, uh, like, yeah, how's it going? Just, just talking. And then this giant Perth man just goes, are you two Sri Lankan? And then it was just like, yeah, and then it's just like, no, oh, I know heaps of Sri Lankans. You, you're Sri Lankan, eh? And the guy's like, well, I usually call myself Australian, but my mum's like South Indian. He's like, oh, I could have sworn you're Sri Lankan. And then they sort of like <laughs> walked away and like, I, I talked to him after, it was fine. But like, one of our like old, uh, fr- like, Basically, I had to. Ex- one of our other mates explained to him. It's like probably shouldn't say that, man. Like to g- generally to, uh, like, and then he was telling me that it's like a Perth, you know, coal miner thing. So it's like you know, I don't yeah, know. I yeah, but I don't think that he was trying to be nasty. He wasn't. He wasn't. It's just like that's the thing. This is a, I think this is a very, you know, disparate large land, and there's all kinds of people, and some parts of those land. There's only one pub. There's yeah. one pub and there's one post office. And you better fucking like tip top, otherwise you're gonna starve. Like, you know, it's it's just a different uh so you know. Isn't it incredible that when a Perth coal miner comes out of the cavern underground that is their life, yeah. It's like, oh, I don't I don't feel comfortable anywhere and oh what's this metropolis? You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can stay here. This place is freaking me out. Oh, where they have B. On, yeah. <laughs> Do you have VB? No, nah, love, we got Carlton. Well, it's a first time for everything. Yeah. Those massive silos on the port filled with wheat or hops? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just going to guess hops to feel more comfortable. <laughs> just because I'm the tallest man here by six feet does not make me feel safe. <laughs> Gentlemen. Walking down the street and he's the same size as the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, we're almost out of time. There was this one last thing. Let's talk about this. So, you know, Prince Philip is dead. Jordan would not know. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You didn't know that? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I had an inkling. But yeah. what we found out was that there is an island. Uh, let me check that exactly. Yeah, in the South Pacific, a tribe. That believes, and they've believed it since the 1950s, that Prince Philip was the Messiah. Here we go. There's always one. And he was. And uh, he was. <laughs> because they had this, like, believe, they had this, uh, <laughs> this is how it started. Yeah. They had this myth that one day a man from far, far away <laughs> will go to a land and marry a very powerful lady, and then he will take over the world eventually and then bring this tribe to supremacy. And so Phil, <laughs> Prince Philip was like, I think he's German or some shit, right? Or he was German. And so they, in the 50s, when he married um, a very powerful lady, the queen, the stripe was like, oh, he must be the Messiah. And now that he's dead, they are convinced, according to tradition, that he will come back in like two or three years and take over the world. Well, let's see if they're right. <laughs> I, I can top you that one. He probably was dead. For he like looked dead. Years. Yeah, I can top <laughs> yeah, he that. He was a walking zombie. There, there is they a right. uh, there's a set. There's a little sect of uh, like really intense extreme Buddhists that live in the foothills of China, some area, some part of China, that believe Stephen Seagal is a supreme being. From another world, <laughs> because, yeah, but so do you. because they're so <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the head of the I'm the head of the group, so obviously I'm just putting it out. Why? There. Because they've seen the movies and they're oh my god, you can beat up so many people. I don't know, but that's what they that's, that's what they believe, and uh, finally a, reg- a religion I can get behind. You know, dude, I don't know which one's funnier as a savior, Prince Philip or Stephen Seagal. They're both pretty good. <laughs> do you know what else I've heard about Stephen Seagal? Uh, apparently, Stephen Seagal lives he still lives in the seventies. So oh. he's he, he apparently he's a very very sexist racist oh man, my, and he just yeah. walks about the earth like it's still the seventies and and people. He's probably in Lawson. You're gonna get cancelled soon. Just he's probably in Lawson. Yeah, he he's he's probably cancel served you. Steven and, Seagal. And they tried to do that. Did it they? didn't work. They tried. Well, look at all the movies that he's producing now. I don't even know he's still. Is he still making movies? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're only out on VHS. <laughs> it's amazing. There is actually an incredible book that I highly recommend everybody what? reads, and it's a guy that ranked. All of Steven Seagal's B grade films, oh. and you know what's amazing? He was just like, "There's like 300 of them," and he's just like, there "God, is. there's so much dog shit." But one of them is incredible. I bet. I bet. There's I one. Bet. There's always like that. It's the same thing with what? like. It's, it's the same thing with all those like. Uh, what's the guy's name who's in Street Fighter and talks like this? Jean Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. <laughs> so much trash, but so many good films too. Like it was such a. 
Almost 50 Expendables 50. What? 1, 2, and 3. No, the, that 80s, no, the 80s shit. He was some, there was some gold dude. Such as Street Fighter. <laughs> Street. <laughs> Look, I like Street Fighter a lot, but there's basically any film that he's in, it's like, yeah, Los Angeles is going to be good. It's just going to be good. Yeah, that was really good. He really should have just called himself Budget Arnold Schwarzenegger to get more. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, but that's what happened. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger with better kicks. Way mm. better kicks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, I look like I should be in um, slightly more watch commercials than Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> watch. Yeah, Maybe he was just a very handsome man and should have been on a lot of sales going, hmm? Do yeah, you like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Austrian as well? Probably. No, I think he's a French, isn't he? No. Uh, he's he's, not. he's, he's not. from Amsterdam. He's not French, I dude. Think. Yeah, he's not French. He's not. He's uh, a... Because the French... What are, what are people from Netherlands or Holland? Damn it, I'm Googling it right now. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Belgian. <laughs> That's the word. I think, is it Belgian? Someone said, yeah, he's Belgian. Oh, Belgian. That's one of those countries where it's like, does it exist? Does it not exist? Yeah. We don't know. We'll find out. I don't think week. they know. Don't they still just not have a leader? <laughs> they did have it in 2016. Yeah. Did it? Hitler so. withdrew. They're still confused. Who's our leader again? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us. Thanks a lot. I hope we, we appreciate uh, your time. Hopefully we're still on the air. Next stay time. tuned for the Up Late podcast as well. And by stay tuned, I mean give us money so you can access it. You know you want to. See ya. Bye. <laughs>